Hello there. Hi. Well. Uh, I think we're just waiting for our last team members just trying to join. So if you would give us a minute. Can you also please rename yourselves with your um, team name? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Is everyone here? Yes. Yes. Apologies, my uh, internet was connecting. No, that's fine. Awesome, you can start sharing your screen and then... Uh... Yes, perfect, I'll share my screen right now. Uh, can everyone see the screen? I just want to make sure. Yeah? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, should, uh, should we start? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. We are the Gurus, and today we are here to present the new MTC experience brought to you by Accenture. MTC was bombarded one morning with negative press reviews because of issues with the Alley card that it employs. That would immensely affect its image on the long run. But what are those MTC, uh, issues MTC is facing exactly and what are the repercussions? Firstly, as shown, there is heavy negative uh, press coverage and that affects customer perception and so could reduce market share. Also, the inconsistency of information received by users is a huge issue because that leads to low customer awareness of MTC service and features and also low customer satisfaction. Finally, broken Ali devices are currently so prominent in the MTC network. Therefore, customers are not paying for the rides and that reduces revenue and profit. So using the SWOT analysis, we identified strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of MTC's usage of Ali. There are a variety of prepaid options as customers can load funds and transit passes, However, the card payment mechanism is inefficient and creates customer resistance, and it's not eco-friendly. MTC and Ali also have threats represented in the switch to di digital methods to keep up with tech evolution that is becoming the face of the future. And finally, MTC has an opportunity to leverage technology to improve its service offering. But what do these failures cost? Based on the current ridership of MTC and the percentage failures of Ali, we estimated that the revenue lost in 2020 due to system malfunctions were almost $9.6 billion, and that the total revenue loss in the coming five years, if Ali is still used, will be more than $47 million after adjusting for inflation. And that sounds pretty concerning for MTC. So we identified our objective as mitigating the issues MTC is having with Ali devices. And based on our analysis, the solution must optimize customer experience and improve MTC's company health. So we designed a highly reliable and versatile NFC reader coupled with an application and data analytics. And we would be targeting MTC current and future customers in Canada. But what's the impact of our solution? 
It optimizes the passenger customer experience in a variety of aspects. It's a contactless solution, which is essential in the era of COVID-19. It's eco-friendly, eliminating millions of cards. It saves more than $47 million for uh, MTC, and it has a $12 million MPV. So moving on to an analysis of the urban transit market, our total market size currently stands at a staggering $412.7 billion. Our SAM is $12.7 billion and our target market stands at USD $2 billion. Further information about market growth and competitors can be found in the appendix. And now let's move on to a technical review. So what is the problem with MTC's current solution? LA fell short because of its inconsistency and low reliability. The software, hardware, and network problems all equally contribute to the negative customer experience. Uh, these problems include physical damage or loss of cards, hardware failures in machines, low connectivity, major security issues, public perception, and consumer resistance. So in order to solve LA's problems, we have to analyze the latest trends in order to create a better solution. These trends are the Internet of Things, which, which channels sensor-based data and communicates it over a network, data analytics, which analyzes the uh, data collected from sensors to realize new patterns, AI, which which, uh, which use automation in order to do complex, uh, complex tasks like decision making and problem solving, and mobility, which is the movement towards the use of mobile applications. Introducing to you Cap Montreal, where the trends of mobility coupled with data analytics and machine learning are used to solve LA and MCC's problems. Mobility will use a mobile app with an NFC reader instead of LA smart card. And this solves problems with LA's card hardware, software, and connectivity. Furthermore, data analytics and machine learning will be used to show users available vehicles and reduce waiting time. And this solves problems with MTC like low customer satisfaction and bad press coverage by reducing customer resistance to switching to Fast Montreal. To be able to make a sound decision on how to exactly use mobility in order to solve Ali's problems, we created a decision matrix with five, uh, with five criteria, which are uh, security, storage, connection speed, sustainability, and uh, compatibility. With the first three criteria having a weight of five and sustainability and compatibility having a weight of four, and each alternative uh, was uh, scored from a score of, uh, of one to three. So our three alternatives were smart cards, which are the um, uh, uh, existing solution, and the use of QR codes and NFC through a mobile application. Um, so. Uh, after looking, uh, after analyzing, we found that NFC scored highest in the first four criteria because it had higher security than the other two alternatives due to the presence of uh, encryption. It has higher storage than smart cards and QR codes. It has the highest connection speed. And it also, uh, with QR code technologies, gets rid of cards, so it's more sustainable. Finally, it fell short in the compatibility with smartphones. However, 85% of mobile phone users have NFC-enabled phones in 2020 globally, and this is projected to increase here. This diagram shows how Fast Montreal is able to revolutionize card payment to offer a seamless process while simultaneously increasing reliability. The traditional way of using a card is now replaced as you digitize the process and have this card completely on your smartphone. Smartphone now acts as a top-up, so we're going to reload the banking card already to be digitized into the wall. The main advantages of this is its instant payment, its high reliability, fast scanning, and it offers better connectivity. More information on NFC's technical specifications can be found in the appendix. Now, this is the roadmap we envision for MTC for successful infrastructure revamp. Firstly, we installed the NFC readers, um, which, were, which was going to tackle the hardware issues pertaining to the hardware fails that are associated with the current implementation of MTC. Secondly, um, there is a huge need for app uh, revamping, which we're going to talk about very shortly. Next, we need to touch upon how data analytics might help us solve the consumer resistance problem. And finally, we'll take a look at what is in it for MTC in the future. So the data from the tablets, smartphones, and smartwatches that are going to be scanned onto the NFC scanner and uh, through the application are going to be st stored on the cloud. Machine learning algorithms are going to be applied to this data in order for us to identify patterns. These patterns are going to help us both uh, minimize the waiting time by analyzing consumer and transportation patterns, and secondly, uh, implement a, a loyalty system by using award points to users every time they ride one of MTC's public transport. 
Here is an app use case where the user is going to basically book a ride on our public transport of choice. Then our application is going to notify the user of time remaining to ride the public transportation after data has been analyzed. This is going to prompt the user to go to the NFC reader when they reach the, the, the destination, uh, before they reach their destination, and then they automatically withdraw the fare once the NFC is gone. The payment is going to be verified through the app and points are going to be added in the reward system every time the NFC is scanned. For a future outlook, we think that uh, digital kiosks that are going to be powered by data analytics is something critical for uh, MTC to consider in the future. These are going to replace the current traditional uh, alley kiosks that are currently um, installed and a predictive maintenance could be applied to these digital kiosks in order to reduce the hardware failure that is applied, uh, that is uh, seen right now. Finally, let's take a look at some of the risks. Um, first risk that we identified with the security risks in terms of tampering with security and eavesdropping with the NTC, we, we have uh, mitigated that by the use of end-to-end -end encryption. The second point is data corruption and manipulation. And we mitigated that by making sure we have periodic backups uh, in order to ensure no loss for the data. The third part is theft, which is partially tackled by the use of card emulation, but we added an extra layer of security by using a pin code on the application. And finally, the cultural resistance, the implementation of data analytics and machine learning in order to reduce the waiting time for public transport and placing a reward system to motivate users to switch to Pass Montreal app was the way we mitigated this risk. But how are we going to market for Pass Montreal? We're going to rely on real-time and offline marketing in terms of flyers, consumer ads, and other marketing tools. D digital media is going to be a very important tool, uh, penetrating through social media apps and also keeping an updated MTC website for promotional videos, etc. And also we're going to rely on uh, a variety of marketing campaigns. So for example, as you can see, uh, these are examples of our marketing channels. We can have flyers around subway stations and partner with shops and restaurants in stations to put our name there to grab customer attention. And also, as mentioned, create reward programs and campaigns to enhance customer acquisition. But what still makes Pass Montreal different? Its contactless nature safeguards health in the era of COVID-19. The open loop system could allow customers to easily refund, which, is, uh, which improves their customer experience. It's eco-friendly because it eliminates millions of cards. And the fact that it is tech enabled ensures adaptation with future emerging smart technologies and needed updates. But how, will, how much will all of that cost? That's what we move on to now. As previously explained, there is a great loss of more than 47 million Canadian dollars from the current system usage. However, we also need to think how much does Montreal Pass cost? The main cost elements were estimated to be app development, NFC readers, labor costs uh, to set them up, and cloud storage, which are the bulk of the cost. And this brings our total setup cost to $13.9 million. In order to account for market price fluctuations, we increased that cost by 20%, and the result was a cost of $16.6 million. This might sound like a lot. However, this setup cost only represents around 30 to 35% of the revenue saved by changing the current system. We then forecasted the surplus over the next five years. For the revenues, we used the current ridership rates as requested in the case, and we increased the price by the 10-year historical uh, average inflation rate in Canada. Uh, that's for the revenues. For the costs, we analyzed the historical financial statements of SCM to better understand their costs, and then we added the cloud uh, storage to them, since it's a new cost and a significant one uh, compared to the size of the other cost elements. And finally, we decided that app maintenance which was only accounting for $40,000 could actually be accounted for with the other cost elements. This gave rise to an MPV of about 30 million Canadian dollars, which makes this investment feasible and in fact, easily implementable, especially that we're only using the riding revenue and we're not using any non-riding revenue. So how long will this take to roll out? We identified three main tasks as shown that our implementation plan revolves around. We will start with company negotiations for six months to decide on which is on, on what is the ultimate way to roll out this uh, solution. Then we need to develop our app and solution, which will take another six months. And then we'll start a pilot phase in the Saint Laurent neighborhood of Montreal because it is occupied with many youth. So that makes our testing easier and our solution 
more uh, more thoroughly tested, followed with a soft marketing uh, plan uh, phase. Then finally, we reach we can update our solution to reach the aggressive marketing phase based on the pilot feedback, and then we can roll out this, uh, the solution in 30 months. But what does Pass Montreal add to the company's sustainability? Pass Montreal tackles goals 9, 11, 12, and 13 of the SDGs. How so? We divided them into economic, social, and environmental goals. Economically, Pass Montreal allows one of the major industries in Canada, which is transportation, to be more sustainable by eliminating millions of cars and making the whole make it test to make it withstand the test of time. Pass Montreal also allows the residents of Montreal to have better IT systems in transportation, which reduces friction, which makes their daily commutes easier, and this affects them socially. Finally, environmentally, the elimination of a lot of plastic due to the elimination of cars will make this solution a lot more environmental than the current one. So finally, to wrap up, Pass Montreal proves to be an upgrade for MTC. It's sustainable, eliminating millions of cards and also fitting for future technological trends, which is better for MTC to keep up with technological evolution. It optimizes customer experience through its contactless nature and open loop system. And also it's profitable, saving a staggering $47 million and having a $12 million MPV. And so in the future, we would hope that the press reviews would look like this, receiving re rave reviews from passengers, increasing revenues for MTC, which is essential, and also seamlessly solving all of the alley issues for customers. Thank you so much for listening. We'd be happy to take any questions. And also, this is our menu. Thank you, ladies. Um, I'm just going to ask a question to the ENGCOM committee. Is this uh, the period where the judges ask the questions? Do we just take off? That's correct, yeah. Just do you want to kick off? And um, we think we have 15 minutes, um, yeah. five minutes each, roughly. Yes, so away. you guys can ask your questions now. Perfect. Well, Emma, you go first, then Dennis, and I'll go last. Okay, perfect. I We, we can uh, we last probably Joe, really, have a... <laughs> We probably have a lot of, of similar questions, so I'll just start off with one here. Um, I'm curious, you, you, you're you changing essentially Pass Montréal, if I'm understanding correctly, is replacing um, our alley, correct? If this is my assumption, so I'm going off of this assumption. Why change the, the, the branding? Why completely change the name? Why not keep um, Ali and simply fix the issues and move forward with this new technology instead of completely rebranding and making it as if you're going live with a new product in the market. The whole idea behind the rebranding was basically that the old system, which is Ali, has been associated with a lot of negative image uh, recently uh, because in the case it was also mentioned that about 10% of the machines can go faulty at any given time. So this is really a lot. This affects the, in the customers on a daily basis. So we thought of changing this to really eliminate this bad image and create a new one, even if they're not necessarily going to change the company or anything, but just creating a new concept behind it. So does this mean that you're essentially all the cards that people have, the alley cards, these are completely obsolete now? No, there is no uh, way of reusing this uh, essentially sunk cost now. Well, they're, they're not going to be fitted into the new solution because the new solution is actually cardless, which is a lot more efficient, a, a lot smoother in the operations with no machines to like lag or anything. Um, so yeah, there will be no use of cards. Perfect. And my last question on this, and after I'll pass it off to Joe, um, the, the funds that people have currently in the LA card, is it going to be possible to transfer to the, the new uh, contactless solution? Um, uh, this is actually a, a very like easily implementable thing because at the cloud storage, you can very easily migrate the, the old data to the new system. So yeah, it can very easily be moved to the new um, uh, past Montreal system. And that's also estimated in the cost, as I mentioned, that we included the cloud storage based on the cost per uh, per member uh, for, for the data. And so, yeah, that's already accounted for. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm trying to understand in your slides, your $47 million of savings, is that in what year are we talking? Is this an accumulation of time? Is that in year one, year five? Uh, you gave a number, but I just didn't see how, where it came out. Sure, Usha, can you go back to that slide with the, with the, um, call, with the revenue saving? Yeah. Before that? Yeah, exactly. So uh, all the data used here, uh, or mm -hmm. like, I'll walk you through the, the process. Uh, so the data for the revenue and the ridership that was already provided in the case, we used that data. And it was also mentioned that we should assume constant ridership over the next five years. So mm -hmm. we used constant ridership. As you can see, the percentage of Ali users, um, the percentage uh, changes uh, and that we kept it uh, as such as in the case. However, the riders per day was kept constant at million uh, riders. Okay, so that's how we calculated the number of riders, which is one of the two main factors for the revenue. Then for the price, we used the current price that was provided in the case, which was $3.5. And then um, uh, the 10 year average historical inflation rate in Canada. Uh, so as you can see, really the price did not really move up a lot because, uh, because that's what's supposed to happen in such a system. Uh, and because that was the inflation rate. Uh, and then for the, um, Moving on to the next thing, which is the percentage of devices malfunctioning. This was also provided in the case, um, the 10 and the 25%. Uh, so we estimated like the percentage of devices malfunctioning, 25% of the people using those devices, 25% of them only were changing to other devices. So for instance, if you're at the um, underground station and you have find one device not working, 25% only would go to another one and try again. So 75% of the customers were actually lost. They would, they would just leave. So that's what we did. We uh, took that 75% of the rights and we multiplied it by the revenue, the, the sorry, the price per, uh, per uh, right, the average price per right to get the total revenue that was lost. So in the first year, we have the 9.6 uh, million uh, uh, dollars and then it increases. So we got the increase and we discounted it by, by um, 2% which is um, we use the down the run uh, diversified industry average rack. So we use that discounting factor and we discounted it from years one to five. So we got a total of $47 million. Okay. Now, uh, I like your, uh, the solution is innovative about using cell phones and smart technologies. Uh, but what about the, the, the percentage of riders that don't have that technology? Like, uh, uh, younger kids who are traveling on their own that don't have a smartphone yet, even though they're begging mom and dad for one, they don't have one yet, or some elderly people who don't, who haven't caught on to the technologies or whatever, or are using not uh, smart type phones, but just other basic devices. So how would they pay up to get onto the rides, onto the buses? Uh, yes, so there are two ways to solve this issue. The first um, approach would be to have like some sort of a family account where the same smartphone is going to be used for like smaller kids who won't have uh, access to the smartphone so they can all be uh, using the same account on our app. So that's the first approach. The second yeah. approach is that we can implement some sort of uh, smart wristbands that are going to also be NFC enabled. And because this solution is very easily implementable, we can implement these bands for elderly people or people who are not who do not have uh, this the access to this technology to be able to use the the NFC um, again yeah, readers very easily. Yeah, uh, also, if, if I might add. Um, in, in Canada, there are, the, the penetration for uh, mobile, mobile phones is at 92%. So that's why we started off with that solution and then thought in the long term, we would improve on having wristbands or other types of NFC enabled technologies that would be, um, that would be suitable for our solution. But for, the st for starting, it would, it would still be uh, profitable for MTC to implement that solution because so many people in Canada have soft, uh, mobile phones already. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kelly. Okay. Um, right. Let's see if we can let's just check out a few things. Um, so your so your um device, your solution is to basically is focus on a solution to replace Ali uh, the Ali card, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Well, 
Oh, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you right now. No, I think you dropped. Sorry, I'm back. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, we can. Let me see. Um, sorry, guys, technology failure. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, no. we can hear you now. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Sorry. Um, I thought for a technical reason. Okay, so you're based on the Annie card. How many, what percentage of the tra of the users of the Metro of this system use that card currently? Uh, if we can go back to the same slide, uh, uh, it's currently, it was uh, mentioned in the case that it was 10% um, yeah. to increase by 5% uh, for the following year, and then it would reach 80% by 2025. So we assume, well, so just to be more conservative, we assume the same percentage. Yeah, it's a massive leap, um, and 90% of the people are, are using tokens, cash, or they're using the transit cards. So you didn't really explain, how do you, how do you get the people to adopt it? Um, when only 10% have adopted the current technology, and you're talking about a massive leap to 80% in no time at all, it's kind um. of a bit... If I may reply, we actually uh, place, uh, that's why we actually use data analytics and the machine learning because uh, this is the incentive that's going to push users to actually uh, uh, buy into our solution and download our app uh, because it, it provides you with, it tells you the available seats uh, uh, or the, the available seats in all the public transportation that's pertaining to MCC, as well as it tells you the waiting time for, uh, for you to actually uh, find the next underground or the next bus. Also, we created the reward system. Usha, if you may go to the side uh, for the data analytics, we also created the reward system so that it rewards people uh, every time they use our um, application uh, or scan the NFC code. And this helps them, um, this helps them uh, uh, reduce the, pri the prices for the, next, uh, for the next trips. So if they didn't use the, our application, okay. then they would never get these the benefits. So that's why we're, this is, this is our incentive. So what you're saying to me is that the people, the 90% of people at the moment who aren't using the system will be suddenly attracted to a new system um, yes. because the technology behind it's nice. Um, additionally, um, I uh, just with add the one. presence. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> With the presence of applications like Uber and Lyft and other applications, it's, it's something that's already being used uh, every day by so many people. So it's okay. very easily integrated. Um, so that's something else we thought about while choosing our solution. Okay, so, so... I want to add that financially, we actually did not assume that those 90% will suddenly move to the new solution. So we use the same rates that were supposed to be, uh, yani were supposed to happen for the previous solution. So we only reach 80%, not even 90%, uh, that slide, in 2025. Uh, the MPV slide. So, so this means that it's, it's a gradual process. Although we we do believe it's going to happen sooner than that because the system is much better yeah. than any, yeah. but we just kept it like that. So, more just another question, Teresa. What's the underlying payment system that you're proposing to use? Because obviously, if you use the if the card swipes, there has to be a payment somewhere. Some somewhere somebody needs to transact a payment. So, how does the payment system work? Uh, so it's going to be a uh, very standardized the, the, the APIs for the PayPal, for example, for like traditional uh, credit card accounts, they're going to be set up on the application. And then it's just going to be uh, interfaced on the NFC reader in order to uh, connect the payment automatically when swapped. So it's like a digital wallet on our application that is going to be synced whenever the, the NFC, uh, whenever the smartphone is basically scanned against the NFC reader. So, so so that means you need to use an application like Apple Pay or you need to use an application, a similar application that runs yeah. on, the, on the device, which means there's going to be a transaction cost for every payment that you make. And I didn't see that in your costs. And the other issue is then is that, is they um, use a cost of $200,000 for the app development. What, what's included in the $200,000? Uh, we actually got this through uh, research of different uh, like costs, different app development right. costs for uh, similar big projects. So um, yeah, that was the average of them. 
Can I well, also add pertaining to your previous point about Apple Pay? We can use normally like credit card, MasterCard. They don't need a third party application in order to do so. They uh, can yeah, you do, but you need, yeah, it's quite complex. You can do, yes, it can be used. Yeah, I can see what you're coming from. Yeah. And the other issue then is what was the underlying problem with, with the existing system? Well, why was it, why was it a failure, do you think? Because first of all, unique cards are very susceptible to wearing out. They're very susceptible to be uh, to be lost. For example, the second point is that the hardware that is currently existing is very failure prone, um, um, because the the cards are you know, very much less reliable than compared to the compared to our solution. So the the main point that we're tackling here is reliability, because I think that was the main issue uh, with Ali is that. The card were not they, they were not consistent, and that's why people were reluctant to, to switch to cards in the first place. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and so I like to add that many countries are moving towards contactless systems currently. So if we're trying to be visionary, we need a solution that would stand the test of time. Because mm -hmm. in a matter of years, that people would need such a solution. Yeah. Well, you you can get contactless cards. It's very but common. That's the, first, the best time to actually start it because people are already, or, or people yeah. are already getting used to it due to COVID. So tell me how how you plan to use uh, machine learning. Now. What's 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 involved, and what do you need to do on the application side to make that work? Sure. So um, we've uh, we've thought about several algorithms depending on what the the outcome that we need. So wish I can mm -hmm. please go to the slide because I want to show. So basically, um, we need to use machine learning for two things. The first thing is customer segmentation. For example, to get to know more details about our customers in order to uh, specify um, a, a word, uh, basically to uh, customize the word system. So we need to use mm -hmm. some sort of supervised learning um, algorithm. Um, for example, uh, clustered, uh, clustering in order to basically get to know more about our customers. Uh, this is going mm -hmm. to help us to customize our ads more and make it uh, like more of a personalized experience. So this is where we wanted to chime machine learning in because we wanted it to be some sort of a way for um, uh, MTC to get to know more about their customers with just by, by basically analyzing the patterns, their um, what transportation routes they use. And also we need to include some sort of uh, transportation analysis in order to help to give people like the, some sort of a recommendation um in mm. order to make them uh, better I any mean, help them okay. make better and decisions how, and that's separate from the app isn't it that's not part of your app development cost i presume it's it's extra on top of the app i think you you add it in later don't you yes yeah, and you basically we added it in the you know, cloud storage and the machine learning implementation for example using AutoML, for example sorry okay. guys time is up for q a so we're going to go into deliberation now um, Rana's going to do the, um, the breakout rooms.
Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. Great. Hey. We're back in the breakout room. Let me see. I've lost the window here. Oh, there you go. I can see you guys. Perfect. So did we want to start off, uh, judges? I will, since I started off with questions, I'll let you start with feedback. Okay, I'll start <laughs> off. Start off nice. Very good presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I liked your SWOT analysis. I like you included risk matrix. You saw that there was a requirement for a roadmap, so you included that. You shared the presentation well. Your transitions were nice amongst the team. The only thing is you didn't take a minute at the very beginning to introduce yourselves or to have a slide that said, here we are and here's what we're presenting and here we are and, and what your roles were going to be. Uh, you don't know us and pretend like you're in front of a dragon's den and you're trying to sell them a solution. And if you go in there and they don't know who you are and if we would have been live, I wouldn't have known your names because nobody introduced themselves. I see them on the screen. So just friendly advice. Uh, your presentation flowed well. Your slides were, were, weren't too busy. Some were a little bit busy, but they were good. And we liked the way you took the UN codes for the ethics and stuff and incorporated that. So whoever had that idea, good thought. And, uh, and you can see Mr. Kelly sitting in a park here in the snow enjoying the snow. <laughs> so I have nothing else. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, let my colleagues give you some of their feedback. Okay, we're going to reverse order. Okay, thanks yeah. for taking my good point, Joe. <laughs> and that is Montreal. If you live in Montreal, you know where, you know where that park is. Um, and if you're an American, it's definitely not Central Park. Um, so look guys very good I, I, li I like the overall thrust I think your innovation was good um, and, and as Joe was saying the ethics was, was very good um, I felt if you're going to really improve I, I would have liked to see a bit more depth and a bit more engineering in it and in, in for example how the machine learning would work or and I suppose it goes back fundamentally to the problem identification. I mean, there's 90% of the people who do cash tokens, everything else that you didn't address at all. And then you kind of went straight into your solution. So there was some really valuable points you could have picked up there if you did a bit more work on that and looked at how the transition came across. Um, but I thought, you know, you did a lot of really good business analysis. I think some of the costs were probably a bit off. But look, you hit all the main elements, which was good. Um, and I liked your presentation, as you were saying, and I think in the Q and A, and and I'm known for asking hard questions. I don't, I'm, I'm not an easy judge, and I know that. So I, I will tend to keep pushing you until I find out the limit of your knowledge. So don't worry about that. But I think you handled me well, and um, I felt that uh, you know where I was pushing stuff, you 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 were able to robustly defend your case, which is really good. So overall, yeah, nice case, nice idea, um, with some room for improvement. So well done. Thank you very much. Hi team. So I will echo my, my colleagues here with the nice presentation, really good job. I used to do a lot of case competitions when I was in your shoes and I know how stressful it is. And certainly, uh, you know, virtually, I can't even imagine <laughs> how stressful it must be switching those slides. Um, but generally for me, you know, engineering is not my area of specialty, but the business side is. And uh, I find I found that the presentation was very, with, very well made. I liked the flow of it. I, I liked like um, Joe had said that you the pass on, but this pass between um, the members when you were speaking, that was really good. You know, I understood everything. I think it was very uh, future uh, outward looking solution focused. So you, you um, focus a lot on here's the, what you need here, what is what the future of Montreal Transit should look like. This is the solution and this is what you need to implement. And I was missing a little bit of the, um, you know, focusing on, okay, what are we working with right now? What is Ali? What are the biggest problems? Um, and, and can we even fix this uh, instead of just bringing in a new solution already? And uh, just for, for like concrete examples here, let's say if I look at slide 10, um, also some messaging around 
the biggest, the big impacts around like, what's the problem with Ali right now? And, and it's critical for us to solve these problems immediately because every day you're losing $26,000 <laughs> every day that these systems are live. So um, that, that's the only piece that I would have played a little bit more into your story. Um, how, how critical it is for you guys to kind of, so you could have sold your, your let's say your innovation a little more. But uh, overall, you know, really great work. I, I love the, I, the creativity around the idea and uh, also echoing my colleagues around the, the ethics and the sustainability of it. Uh, thank you so much for your feedback. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Thank you very, thank you very thank much, you so judges. Much. For your yeah. feedback. We really enjoyed presenting for you guys, so thank you. And we appreciate so all the feedback. We're hopefully going yeah. to improve. Well, you got a big case on Friday, so take up take the, the feedback in a positive fashion. And uh, throughout your careers, whenever you do a presentation, you get feedback, just add that to your toolbox because that's how you get better and that's how you're gonna have good presentations and your work will improve over time. So you know. No matter what business line you go into, no matter where you end up, it's always good in practice. It look I could tell that you guys practiced before you did your presentation, and because uh, you took some time and you rehearsed it, which is good, and that that helps. And those are important keys. So your big uh, your big ones coming on Friday. So get some rest, get rested up, and uh, good luck Friday. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I have to mention one thing uh, for the judges that one of the team member is already doing this case while being COVID-19 uh, diagnosed. Um, and she didn't make this appear in front of the judges with a lot well of... Yeah. Well, the, so, uh, we won't ask who. You don't have to raise a hand. No, no, no. We won't we say who. get well soon. Yeah, we thank you, you very well much, soon. Joe. Thank You're you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys. Thank Great you to meet much. you guys. Well done. You too. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was interesting that their coach was uh, listening in, and I find that good because he he yeah. he took some notes and probably uh, will help them into the next round. Yeah, I think it's the standard, Joe, actually. They should all do that because it's really yeah. important that that the um, that they get that feedback um, and that someone's there to hear it for them. And I think uh, it, there is definitely an advantage. Yeah, we, so we judge the team. Part, in, you know, uh, really important. Yeah, we judged the team in, in January and their coach hadn't, they weren't able to get a hold of their coach the whole day. Oh, so... Wow. So they were, you can tell that they had struggled and, uh, but we gave them a lot of points for creativity because they were thinking way outside the box. Oh, Good. Oh. Judges, I know uh, if I can ask you to go ahead and move to the deliberation room um, and I'm going to let the next team in. Okay, can I just ask one, Joe? Yes. Uh, did you actually put the score into the, into an overtime? Is it saving for you? Well, you have to, once you put it in, you have to do the back arrow. Yeah. That's what I did yesterday. I put in my scores and then we were told hit the yeah. back arrow and then okay. go back into it to make sure the score was there. All right. Don't think it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe it is. Thanks very much. I, I get you in the, in the liberation room. Thanks. Yeah. And Sabrina, you got, oh, you got, you confirmed. Thank you. So you're letting the next team in, Sabrina? Uh, Rana is, but I think she did a, a breakout room for you guys to go in because the next uh, presentation will no. start at 4.10. No, no breakout room. It's just if I hit the button, I leave. If you can click at the, there's a breakout room button ah, okay. at the. Okay, hit that one. At the bottom, yes.
Emma, I were you able to join the breakout room? No, I don't see the button yet. So let me. Um, usually, I have a pop up, right? Yes. Uh, yes, but now no. Um, if there's the breakout room button at the um, at the bottom oh, of the yeah. page. Perfect. No I'm going to join that. Thank you. No problem. All right. Uh, he needs to go into it because I don't have his uh, person. My guy. Uh. Okay. Uh, Dennis is. Oh, he has another. Uh... Yeah, he didn't give me his person. My man. And I send him a private message. Okay, Jesus. It's okay. We have time. Two is to control. Two is to control. All right, let me go to this breakout room. See what's up in there. Can I go? <laughs> oh, hold on, sorry, I was muted. There's a breakout room button at the uh, bottom of the page. Yeah, I'm gonna go chat with them a bit, see what's up. Okay. <laughs> Hi team, welcome back. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? I'm Hi. good, how are you? Good. good. You guys feeling okay? Excited? Yeah, yeah excited. a little tired, but we're, we're excited to present. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, I received the media consent form from Molly. Do we need to yeah. sign them for every case? I signed them like way in the beginning. Like, Same here. Oh, really? Yeah, I believe I, I remember didn't find them, but if you guys can forward it to me again, you only have to sign it once. Uh, but I seem to have lost it. Sorry. Okay, yeah, I can definitely forward you that email again. Um, do you mind if we do it after this presentation? Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Of course. Thank you. 
Hey team. Hey. Hello. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing, we're doing well. So we'll, we'll let the inch come. Uh, people kick it off and then we'll start. Yes, if you can share your screen, please, and you can go ahead and get started. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yep, thanks. Hi, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for coming to listen to our presentation today. We are the Explorers. My name is Risa Repetto. My name is Molly Feeney. My name is Olga Katienko. My name is Helen Wong. And we are so excited to present to you today. I will now be discussing the background of this case. Montreal Transit System is the second largest urban transit in Canada and the fourth largest in North America. In 2020, they had 383 million riders throughout the entire year. A year ago, MTS adopted a smart card technology system. This helps load transit passes and, truck transporta and track transportation usage per customer. Although this was an innovative idea, it had negative responses from some consumers. This was due to broken devices and slowed process time. A result of this was decreased revenue for MTS. I will now discuss the triple bottom line of the Montreal Transit System. The triple bottom line connects people, profit, and planet. These are all three very important factors to consider when making very large decisions for a company. In terms of people, the main goal here is to make travel efficient and less time consuming and definitely practical for people using MTS. If people have a pleasant experience, then they will return and bring in more revenue overall. All of the changes which were implemented by the Montreal Transit System must also be environmentally friendly solutions, which can be sustained over time. Now Molly is going to get into the main problem at hand. Thank you, Risa. The smart card technology system, Alert, adopted by MTS has proven to be a problem for the transit company. Currently, only 10% of customers are paying their fares with the Alert smart card, and among that small group, 10% of the Alert devices are not functioning at any given time. This is posing very high risks to MTS since customers may decide to use a different company to travel with, losing traffic and money for MTS. Risa, will you continue? Yes, thank you, Molly, for explaining the problem at hand. If changes are not made to address this issue, there will be many negative outcomes. For example, since people are unhappy, they are definitely reducing the amount of time using the Montreal Transit System overall. This means decreased revenue for the company. Overall, they are losing market share in this market segment, and competitors have the opportunity to actually steal that market share from them. A solution to avoid these outcomes will be presented later on in this presentation. Now, Molly, will you discuss the financial analysis? Thank you, Risa. Moving on to our financial analysis. As I previously stated, only 10% of MTS customers are using their Aller smart cards, with 10% of those cards malfunctioning. This gives an estimated daily total of 10,000 customers dealing with a faulty card every day. In the worst case scenario, all 10,000 of these daily customers may choose to bring their transit business elsewhere, possibly leaving MTS with $70,000 in lost revenue. Using that statistic, for the 260 workdays in, in the year, the total maximum potential revenue loss is $8,200,000 per year and $91 million over five years. Although this possibility does not carry a high likelihood, the possibility to earn back even a fraction of that would give great value, would be of great value to MTS. So now Risa will continue the ad, will review the advertising campaign. Thanks so much, Molly. I will now be discussing the advertisement campaign, which should be implemented to inform consumers of the new changes. This slide shows the target audience for this advertising and marketing campaign. Primarily, we are interested in this campaign reaching the 10% of individuals who were previously unable to use their new cards, as well as individuals who solely rely on public transportation for essential tasks. It is also important to consider people who are unhappy with the previous changes in MTS frequent travelers who utilize other methods of transportation, and finally, people who are looking to reduce travel time with an efficient, cheaper method of transportation. 
I will now go ahead and discuss the specific advertisement and marketing plans. The main goal of this advertisement campaign is to inform customers of our new and innovative changes. We believe this campaign will estimate around $50,000. This is to include billboard, prints, commercials, and posters in established stations. We will also create a video, video tutorial on how to use this new technological advances implemented to ensure that everyone is on the same page and knows how to access it. If successful, it will encourage people to continue to utilize the Montreal transit system as a primary method of transportation. We will also educate and convince consumers that the advantages will cut down on travel and waiting time and definitely has the potential to raise revenue for this company overall. Now Olga will discuss the digital trends and other suggestions. Awesome. Thank you, Risa. So the observed digital trends are an increase in demand for mobility share data from customers for analytics and increase speed between machines through interconnection between smart devices. Our suggestions for MTC to fix the current issues would be to increase mobility with smart cards, improve Wi-Fi connectivity, and decrease processing time between customer transactions, and finally, upgrade current systems. For our solutions, we have made improvements to the network hardware and software issues, starting with network. So for network stability, our first solution is to integrate a Wi-Fi hotspot in every MPC vehicle in order to prevent connectivity loss due to range or large scale network failures for MTC, as well as increased speeds overall. These hotspots cost 100 each with a $35 monthly cost, which can be negotiated to be less. Our second solution uh, to prevent any connectivity loss is to include an ethernet cable from the hotspots to the Allers smart car readers. This is a simple analog solution for our digital problems that could arise in the large scale. Finally, to fix spotty and inaccessible underground reception by moving underground readers above ground, this will allow for a stable connection and prevent any network loss that can happen and be out of our control. Next are the hardware solutions. Thank you, Olga. For our hardware solution, we came up with the idea that using RFID card. You may have the question, what is RFID card and how does it work? So RFID card, which is called radio frequency identification card, it would help to solve the problem of disconnect or connection breakup since it's using electromagnetic field to automatically identify and track tags attached to the objects. So it is captured by a radar um, via video waves. Without Wi-Fi, you are still able to rely on the staff to go manually find, drop their device into a device like Prando. That has been a long-standing turn off of the correctional facilities using the device. Here we go to the benefit of using RFID. So first of all, decreasing the bottleneck scenario at the high capacity uh, when the traffic area is like overload. And secondly, determine the ideal spot for the fire gates and turnstiles. Also at the same time, increasing uh, passengers workflow scenarios, also preventing no pay passenger situations. And last but not least, it is uh, ease of pay for the passengers. Here we go, the software, uh, software solution. We create the MTC app, which offered the QR code for each ticket, allow the online payment, payment happen. So the passenger can track, also can track in the transportation by checking their schedule on time. This way it will simplify the process so much easier. Here's the waterfall methodology of our MTC app idea. For the requirements, we pursue payment function and the tracking functions. You will be able to pay easier, much easier, and tracking the transportation on time. We can also, uh, for the design, we can hire the um, software engineer to construct the software programming. For the implementation, uh, implementation plan, we will construct the software and store the data. And by installing the software and testing them, we will be able to debug if there's any problem pop up. Last but not least, for the maintenance, we check the errors and optimize the capabilities. Now I will pass the floor to Olga and talk about the information plans. Thank you. 
Thank you, Helen. So for the comprehensive implementation plan, MTC would need to identify issues and brainstorm a solution. Next, solutions would be created and then deployed. So by installing the hotspots, ethernet cables and RFID technology, then testing would occur through analysis of Aller ridership data, which will then be used to redesign and optimize the implemented technology. And then for future implementation, the MTC app will be used to decrease traffic for physically adding payment and tracking buses and subways. Lastly, Molly will be reviewing the cost analysis. Thank you, Olga. Reviewing the cost analysis of programming and implementing new RFID cards for MTS, you can see there's there is a large profit. The upgrades to the smart card technology for scanning into transit vehicles totals to only $188,769, while the revenue accumulated to selling RFID smart cards to the 1 million daily riders out over the suggested implementation timeline yields $2 million and creates an overall profit of $1,811,231. Thank you so much for listening. We will take time to answer any questions now. Hmm. Will I start, Joe, or do you want to start, or Emma, would you say? Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead. Um, okay, guys, we're, we're, we're questioning in reverse order. Uh, to be the last time. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's very good, very interesting. Um, I have a few questions for you. Um, the first question is 10% um, of the, the transit people 10% of customers only have these Addy cards. Everybody else is using cash, tokens, um, and other types of paper cards. So how, how are you going to get these people to adopt your technology? I can or are ahead. you planning to do them in parallel? Or are they going to coexist? That's a great question. I can go ahead and answer this. I so want to give I... good questions. <laughs> I mean, I figured. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, so our idea here is that we want to get everyone kind of on that same playing field, but we do understand that not everyone is going to be able to adapt to this sort of technology, especially if, say, someone doesn't have access to a smartphone and they can't utilize an app, um, or say someone just really isn't overall great at this kind of techno technological advances. Um, but that being said, we are going to use some of our advertising budget to create a promotional video. So besides just getting the word out there with all of our promotions that we budgeted for, um, with billboards, commercials, advertisements, just, you know, all of those kinds of things. We're also going to take some of that money to create a pretty extensive um, informational video, really just teaching people how to use mm. all of these um, recommendations that we are offering, um, just so we can get everyone on the same page and that it covers mm. all of the basis for questions okay. that people may have. So ju just to give you an, an example of what I would call instant gratification, what do you think would really encourage people who pay in cash to adopt this system? What would be a really big incentive, do you think? I would say something that would really incentivize people would be offering lowered fare rates um, yep. by using the card for you know yep. X amount of months after it's released. Okay, I think that's that's something. And um, the other two question I was asking you then is when you're looking at your technology, um, are you offering an RFID card or are you offering a smart app on the phone or are you offering both? Um, I can oh, Thank you, Olga. Um, so we, we offer both. Um, so for the QR code on the smartphone app, uh, it will be like the widespread um, for our like main, okay. so the main marketing because it's like easier and more common because you know, everyone's like starting using a smartphone now, but we also consider about uh, like, like old people uh, group, like th uh, those age, they might be more comfortable about holding card and like, swiping it and not really having a smartphone but that type of situation, uh, we still need the R uh, RFID card for them, so they can uh, load found on the card and by swiping them. Yeah, that's our attention when we bring up the post. Thank you. Okay, um, and final question is, um, how long do you think it will take to, in time, according to your plan, how long will it take for people to start adopting this new system to move from 
on uh, on the Ali Car Ali Card system over to maybe I don't know 50, 60, 70 percent of people on, well, on the new system. How long do you think that would take? Well, hopefully, if we did um, offer a promotion for you know getting the new smart card mm -hmm. in the first let's say six to twelve months of it being released, we would hopefully yep. try to be able to attain at least thirty percent. Um, of regular riders, and then maybe get our way up to 50, 60% in the next year. Okay, months. fine. Thank you. I'll hand over to my uh, my colleagues. Thank you very much for your, for your answers. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. We appreciate them. Thank you. I'll go, Emma, and then you'll go last. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciated uh, your presentation. But I didn't see one of the requirements of the case was the uh, the use of uh, a, a AI. So to understand either problem solving, ridership issues, etc. And I didn't see you skimmed it very quickly, but I didn't see how how you would actually use AI and uh, advanced analytics to help you with your product that you're offering or your solution that you're offering. Can you point me to where you you were going to use that? Um, hi. Honestly, I quickly start the uh, first part to your question. So with AI, so we were hoping to use artificial intelligence through originally starting with data analysis of um, the ridership and like the implementation of the new technology to then be able to use that to further uh, increase our uh, usage as well as uh, like see economic growth through that. Okay. Okay. Um, if I go back to our digital trends slide, um, although AI is an important um, factor, we were just focusing on these other three digital trends, increasing um, mobility demand, sending receiving data, and faster reaction times from machine to machine. So although we did not include it in this PowerPoint, it would be something that we would be looking into in the future. Okay. Uh, my last question, and it was tricky in, in the case, buried in the case somewhere, there was, a, there was a little statement that said how the operators, so the bus drivers uh, and other operators, not the riders, are not comfortable with new technologies and not comfortable with adding these technologies they currently have with the LA system on their buses or at stations and uh, where they are now. So they, they, they didn't seem comfortable with the switch to a newer technology and now you're adding hot Wi-Fi hotspots, ethernet cables, et cetera. Do you think that will help or just grow another layer of frustration on, on these operators? Or are you can, trying to take that level of frustration off of them? I can go ahead and take this question. Um, so that's yeah. definitely something that we were considering when we were trying to come up with a solution. Um, we realized that they were frustrated. However, a change needed to be made. So we're hoping that all of these changes that we want to implement will take some of the frustration off of the drivers um, and the people who had these frustrations. However, that being said, whenever you implement a change, it's going to be a little different at first and it's going to take some time for people to adapt to it. So we're hoping that by making videos, teaching people how to use it um, and just providing guidance, you know that we're there to help them and we're not just doing this to confuse people. Um, we think that in the end it will have a positive reaction. Um, however, obviously with any change, it's definitely going to take some time to get used to, but we obviously were thinking about them in creating a decision and we wanted to really help them, um, which is why we created the solutions that we did. Okay. Thank you very much. I have no more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi team, um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, definitely, like my colleague said, uh, I appreciate the presentation and on my end, I really appreciate the simplicity of your solutions. I think they were targeted and uh, anyways, we'll have a feedback session after. But um, my question here, uh, my first question, I, I, the, I'm not sure I understand 
what the Wi-Fi hotspots are solving for. Um, are they specifically, was there an, an issue identified? What's the issue that was identified that led you to believe that the Wi-Fi hotspots were necessary? Yes, hi, so I could take this question. So uh, from the report, we understood that the issue was with the uh, Aller cards was that there were issues, uh, intermittent issues with connectivity as well as connection speed. And so um, obviously Montreal is a huge city. And so, uh, and like with huge weather climate, uh, weather um, patterns that we can't account for, especially in the modern day, larger stores are gonna happen. So in order to combat this, we were hoping to create uh, or to include uh, the Wi-Fi hotspots in that, uh, within like the card readers, like uh, at each like bus subway vehicle to prevent uh, connectivity loss, loss and then like frustration uh, from the actual cards not registering and not reading for the customers. Um, and so the ethernet cable was just like a backup plan in case the storms were so bad or whatever potential um, external event happened to ensure that uh, the connectivity for the card readers like does not malfunction. If I can just add something right after you, Olga, as well, um, also pertaining to the last question about how people or how some of the drivers um, and people running these different operations were uncomfortable with the switch. We thought that the Wi-Fi hotspots not only will take some stress off of the consumer, the person actually traveling to speed up that um, that kind of registering with the ticket and getting onto the transportation system, but also it can take some frustration off of the person who's actu actually operating, um, whether it's a bus, whether it's a metro, whatever it may be. Um, just because if a consumer is having trouble paying for their ticket or getting onto the bus, it also is some stress on the person driving the bus as well, because um, they really just want to be quick, be in and out, get the job done. So we thought that this could kind of mitigate some of um, the problems on both ends and really just make it a smoother process overall for both parties. I, I definitely see the, the value in having a Wi-Fi being a very <laughs> strong millennial. I definitely see the value of having finally having Wi-Fi in our subway stations. Um, but also, I think where, where I got confused is um, you, you say that you're going to be implementing these RFD, uh, RFID cards. So essentially what I'm understanding is that the, these RFID cards will now be replacing the, the current Alley cards, which require to be tapped on these Wi-Fi enabled uh, stations. And here I, I see require Wi-Fi connection to be able to transfer. So I was just wondering, like, is it, are we in, implementing the, these, this Wi-Fi solution to mitigate in the short term for the Alley cards that are, that are there, or it's going to be people can use the current alley cards and the new RFID cards. Um, wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I can take this over. Um, we did consider about that, like it's like short term when Wi-Fi cut off. And so we did some research about that. So the by using the RFID card, uh, Wi-Fi helps the team I mean, to push the data to your reporting platform. And so the RFID card user, like you will automatically connect. There's no need to like, have to go back to push this data when on your like mobile device. Uh, so when the Wi-Fi cut off, like short term, uh, we I mentioned like we can uh, rely on stuff to go manually find. Uh, that may sound like kind of old school, but it could be like a solution for the short term disconnect uh, when the connection cut off because that happened like from time to time, and we uh, we live in like twenty one century and we get used to that. And that could be a backup solution when the when this situation happens. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. It does. Thank you. Um, I think that's it on my end. I I see. Um, I, I was just wondering if there was a roadmap here. I see that there was a roadmap for our app implementation, but I was wondering if there was an overall roadmap for the solution and integrating. Uh, you know, when we were thinking about launching this advertising campaign, do we wait for all of the solutions to be implemented or do we um, kind of stagger that in different ways? Yes, of course. So, of course, after we implement um, our solution, we would start phasing in advertising just to get everything, you know, pick up speed, get things moving. 
Um, and then probably peak advertisement campaign would be about three to four months in just to make sure that everything's working out before we have large amounts of people coming in and like and purchasing the new cards and using them. Um, I'll get Can on I my pitch in a question? Oh. Quick question, okay. if I have any time left. Can you just go through the cost analysis slide 27 for me, please? And just yes. break it down and explain to me where your costs came from, please. Yes, so um, the fixed cost for the vehicle upgrade, we got that $100 from the Wi-Fi hotspot system and the $1 from the Ethernet cable. In mm. the case, it did say that there were 1,869 vehicles. So multiplying that by 101, I got the okay. $188,000. And okay. then um, the cards, the ch RFID chips, the RFID chips to go into the smart cards would be about five to ten dollars each. So assuming okay. we could purchase them in bulk at five dollars. Um, okay, where is your where is your software development cost? Your app development cost? Um, and your that infrastructure was, data. Um, we did not account for any cost analyses for those um, costs. Thanks, Sabrina. But um, sorry, go ahead. That would be something that we would work on in the future. So there's there's no cost there's no cost at all for for security for software development for storage data any of that stuff okay you're just looking at a few pieces of hardware that's fair that's fair I just want to be clear and it, did you do a cost benefit analysis or a, a, a net present value or some some analysis on the on the uh, on the return on the on the investment? Um, unfortunately, we do not have any of that information prepared right now. Okay. Um, and did you do any analysis on the, did you make any estimates of the costs, for example, for the current, the current cost of handling cash and tokens and all this kind of stuff? Did you do any, did you look into any of those costs or any of those, um, any of the logistics or issues around those? Um, no, assuming that those would be in use for the next, you know, six, 12 months, that would be something we focus on in the future. Okay. Sorry, it's Molly, is it? Yes, this is Molly. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I didn't say uh, um no that's cool i just wanted to be clear because i, I wasn't totally clear in my own mind look uh, thank you very much for your for for your questions um joe you might have 30 seconds there if you want to show no the time is or, up or Anna. sorry to up? cut off Excellent. yeah time is up so we'll go into the deliberation room thank you. uh rana will set those up yeah well thank done guys thank, thank you very much time. well done well thank done. you so much
All right. I believe everyone, everybody is here. So judges, you guys can start uh, the feedback session. One of our team members got booted. She got booted in what way? I think what? she just got kicked out of the, the call for a quick second. <laughs> Molly, is that, was that who? Yeah, it, I thought okay. she just came back, but I think that was just maybe a lag of her um, exiting the Zoom. So hopefully yeah, she's, she's just back. joining in. We saw her oh, enter. There yep. she is. Thank you for okay. waiting. So I'll start. Thank you very much, Team The Explorers. Very good presentation. Uh, you did a nice presentation. We liked your flow. Uh, what I appreciated is the introductions that you took a few minutes right at the very beginning to introduce yourselves. And uh, that was that's good. I find that very important. And when you did your handoffs, you did very well. And uh, you introduced one another and handed the ball back and forth really well. Thank you very much. You you went a bit quick. You did a good job on the, I found, on the problem solving. You created a bluff, bottom line up front. And that's what a lot of, uh, I have to do a lot of those in presentations as well. And, and you presented what the issue was. but the, And then found it a little bit lacking in when I asked the question on the AI solutions. And the reason I asked it is we use the AI for, uh, to develop and understand when things are gonna fail. So for preventative maintenance. So if we know a certain product is gonna fail regularly, then you put in a plan in place to swap them out before you have a failure. So we use those and those types of, uh, of issues. But I'm just gonna say, I appreciated it. It was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, hope you take back the feedback that we were gonna give you and improve not improve, but take it, add it to your toolbox and use it for Friday's presentation because it's going to be a big one. And uh, so you're going to have to knock it out of the park on Friday for uh, for the big win. So thank you very much for your for all your work. Very good. Emma or Dennis? Yeah, I can take it away. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, I will echo Joe. Thank you for the presentation. I think it was great. Uh, you're all great presenters. Like, like that's the first thing when we went back into the presentation room. Because like, the, we really liked the the flow of the presentation. The story was well put out there. Um, I will agree with Joy with uh, Joe. I enjoyed the upfront section around problem. I feel like you really understood the so what of you know identifying. Okay. Ali has these specific problems and this is the friction that it's creating for our customers and for our bottom line. Um, quick, I, I took this quick note that I just want you guys to, and this is, I, I hadn't even talked about this with, with Joe and Dennis, but when you're doing cases, I had, I'm, I had done a lot of cases in my uh, university years as well. Be careful, even though the sponsor might be Accenture, um, and you know, Accenture is a technology consulting company, we help our, uh, clients, you know, implement these solutions, ideate on the solutions. If we're in strategy and then implement the solutions, here your client was really MTC, um, so the Montreal Transit. And uh, I, I saw a couple a couple times in the slides that you had said that Accenture was the client. So I just want you guys to, to make sure um, you have that, you know, nuance going forward. And so, yeah, I like the, the so what of the problem the upfront. I will agree with Joey, it was a little you deep you deep dive let's say in the advertising campaign very quickly before let's say uh talking about the solution first so i would take if i look at your little timeline here you have advertising campaign pulled out of the solution for me advertising campaign is a uh component of the solution it is you know the communication plan to your solution so i would have maybe switched those over that would have, have, have been great um and then the solution you know, finding a way, always think about finding a way of tying all of your, even though you have like tactical pieces to your solution, really taking a step back at the end of your, you know, case cracking 
time, take a step back and, okay, how do all these pieces fit together? What is our, do we have a name for this? Is it a, a version 2.0? And then just making sure that everything makes sense together as it, all the pieces fit together. And I think for you as well, when you're delivering it, you're going to be much more convicted, um, you know, convincing as well when you're, when you're selling your, your solution to your client, essentially. But overall, I, I really uh, appreciated the presentation and it was a great job. Okay, thank you, Emma. Okay, just, um, all right. Uh, I would echo again very much what my, my, my colleagues were saying. I think um, like the strongest part of this case was your presentation. You did a really good presentation. Um, handovers were fantastic. And I know how difficult it is to, to do um, online. We, I run a competition in Ireland like this and then we moved online in September, of November, and it does take a lot to do. So it was really smooth, very good handovers and um, really good. And um, I think your analysis up front was good. Uh, I would echo what the guys were saying and, and you laid it out. Um, and I think that that was an important piece. Now, after that, I think the middle piece was a bit weak. Um, um, I think I've already, I mean, you probably know what I'm going to say. I mean, the financial analysis is, is, is quite thin and you need to do it. I mean, think about a case study like an exam. You know, you need to you need to answer all the parts of the question. So what's difficult, and I think most certainly the advice I give you for the next case, right? You have a score, you, you have the scoring criteria that we score you against. So you need to hit problem solving, business technology, innovation, sustainability and ethics, and um, presentation q &A. You need to hit every one of those bases. And you particularly need to hit the business and engineering really strongly because half the marks for the whole case go for those two categories. So you really need to hit them hard and they're, they're the ones that you, you know, you, you, you hit the periphery pieces fine, but the middle piece was missing for me. Um, but look, I think um, I, I really liked the presentation. I enjoyed it. Um, I think you have, as a team, you work really well together. Um, the big thing now really, particularly for the 12 hour case on Friday, I think, is it sun tomorrow and you present on Friday, is it, or is it on Friday? I can't remember, sorry. Um, the most important thing for you to do is to really get your analysis in the center done. No problem on the presentation, really good. But just make sure you hit all the bases, all the scoring points. And if whatever questions are asked, make sure you, every one of those questions that we that are in, they call the challenge in this case, that you answer them, because that's where you're going to score high. Um, but overall, yeah, good performance, guys. Well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you. One thing is I like uh, as a closing, when we did the questions, uh, we purposely, not purposely, but it came out, we were hitting your different topics where each of you talked and you handled it well. You handled it well. You each took your own questions. We're not one person focusing on answering all the questions. So make sure you follow that same pattern in the next round. So share the questions that come in and answer them that way as well. Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. Good luck today and uh, is tomorrow. You said you you spend the whole day on the on the case. Yeah. Well, good luck tomorrow, yeah. and we'll see you guys Friday, maybe. Thank you. Hopefully, we appreciate well, it. Best of luck, guys. Thank good you luck. very much for your Thank time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good stuff. Where do we go now? Is All it right. To go somewhere, or we stay here? Um, no, you put us into a different room, do you? For a minute, Sabrina. Sabrina. Well, now actually, it's your long break, so I don't know if Rana, you have anything to uh, add to that? Yes, please. If you can enter the deliberation room, uh, you have a break until. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a 40 minute break. Okay. So. Be back at. Be back at. 40 minutes back now, 10 yeah. minutes, five minutes before the start of the next presentation. Good. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll see, Supper okay, time. We'll see you in 40 minutes, guys. <laughs> see you. Bye. See you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Hey, Francis. Hey, Rana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Make you a co host? Yes. The presentation will begin at uh, 5 50, I believe. Yes. Okay, perfect.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Good afternoon. Good evening, sorry. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, Victor, can you rename yourself, please? Ah, yes, it must have changed when I got into the room. Yeah, you just do that. Yes, I'll do so. Now. Uh, can we start? Is Emma? Uh, we're missing Emma. Emma is not joined. Oh, oh yes, I'm here. Oh no, there's <laughs> Emma from the team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about the wait, guys. Uh, won't be long. She is here. Hi, Emma. Hi. Can you rename yourself, please? Uh, yes, give me one second, sorry. Sure, take your time. I'm sorry I asked this again, but uh, can we start now? Just give us a minute and then you can go ahead and start. Uh, Dennis, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you okay. Awesome, then you guys can start. The most dangerous phase in every language is that we have always been doing it this way. It jeopardizes the creativity of so many organizations and prevent them from achieving success. With the emerging technology in the public sector, it is time for MTC to relook to strengthen the transit, their transit system and harness this type of power. Good afternoon, my name is James Pham and I'm here with my colleagues from the Globe International, Emma and Victor. And we are here today to present to you a proposal that will help you take advantage of the emerging technologies. Unfortunately, due to the personal loss, our financial expert, Efan, will not be joining us in this presentation. The key problem that we have identified with MTC is that you are losing your credibility due to unreliable technology. It's often that we overlook this root of the problem and rather than focus on the symptoms of it, which is the loss in revenue and fundings. However, because of the unreliable technology, that leads to a decline in your riders' trust in Quebec. And at the same time, internally, it leads to a decline in operators' involvement, which, by the way, should be the main advocate when, whenever you adopt this technology. Our overview recommendation is that in the short term, MTC should improve your hours payment methods. And in the long term, you should focus on strengthen MTC transit network management. Whenever tackled with any new problems, we always want to look at from the customer side, what are the riders are thinking? Through our analysis in Quebec, right now there are 344 million riders are not using hours technologies. And amongst those that are, that are using it, 7.5% of them are not paying because of malfunction or dissatisfaction of the technology. 
And this 7.5% leads to a $10 million loss in revenue in 2020. How does that affect your projected revenue impact? The three key highlights here is that, as I've mentioned, the 10 million Canadian loss in Canadian dollars loss in revenue in 2020 will lead to a, an average of 45 million dollars annual projected loss in the next each in the next five years. And at the end of 2025, your organization will see not only not only not see the adaptation reach up to 80%, but also we'll see a 225 million projected total revenue loss. Seeing we already know that one of the main problem came from the technology unreliability, but what is the exactly problem here? So 60% contribute to our technology problem is come from the network. And we were able to identify that right now after the pay after the user have the cat read, then the data will get transferred from the cat reader to your station, which is a really long distance. And that tie up to the low in connectivity stable. And also it's really hard to assign IP address for your customer. And this is tied up to the lack of efficient data transferring method. The 30% contributed it from the hard way. We know that in MTC, right now you still use the SD card to store your payment and data and customer data. And this is not the most optimal data storing method. And more on, we will introduce you how to improve this one. And last but not least, is a 10% come from the software. And we believe the root of this problem is because of the lack of advanced software development experience. Since Ala already mentioned, this is by far the most complex technology that ever development. And then as a consultant, we will send people to help you later on. Now let's take a look at what is the digital trends are having on the market right now. First of all, it's a mobility. So right now it's convenient, it's personalization. Everyone's have your own phone, tablet with you most of the time. And therefore it's have a high demand in the market. But how can we do it? How can it help for MTC? So that we want to leveraging the other mobile app so that all our customers can get the most out of the mobility technology. And the next thing we want to like, look at is the IoT, the Internet of Things. They will link all your infrastructure, your vehicle, and even your customer together. And therefore, it can give the operator manager more efficient transit network management. And it will help them to make better decisions to customize the user experience and ultimately improve MTC rider experience. The next two trends I want to present to you is data analytic and AI. These two technology come hand in hand. You have the data, but if you use the raw data, then there's no use of it. When we bring in AI, we analyze it and we present it as a graph or as a better way for the manager to look at it, then they can better interpret the data and ultimately make a better decision for your organization. We also consider the applications of some of these emerging technologies. And the first application we considered was the use of AI and data analytics to send out accurate notifications. And so you know what time your boss is coming and what time you're expected to drop at a particular location. We also consider the use of Internet of Things technology to plan the first mile to the last mile of the journey. And so the entire stage of the journey is covered. And finally, we can also leverage AI to plan the most effective routes so it's cost effective and it also saves time. And so there were three major criteria guiding our decision. The first one is the fact that it has to be reliable. And so we want to leverage QR scanning technology to improve the real reliability of this technology. We also want it to be cost effective and finally, we want it to be rider friendly. So we want to provide the most seamless experience for the rider using this transit system. And based on all the decision criteria, we recommend you in the short term, implement the QR code payment. And in the long term, we bring more technology in to leverage IoT and AI technologies. Now let's take a closer look into our recommendation. This is from the MTC size. We're gonna implement QR display screen on your buses and also the four subway station that you're having right now. 
And now let's take a look from the customer side. Let's meet Anna and hear about her journey. So when Anna get to your vehicle and in here is the bus, he, she already have her card balance loaded beforehand. It can be by phone from your customer service outlet or but on internet, either way she prefer. And then after that, all she needs to do is scan that QR code and everything gonna be automatically deducted from her account balance. And the last step is just enjoy the ride. Yeah. The benefit, if there's anything that we want you to remember from this easy payment is that it saved not only time for the riders, but also the loading time for your server as well. Your legacy process, as you can see on the top of the screen, is that they have to tap the card, go to the card readers, and then it's resent to centralized servers. With this new payment method, easy payment, it will be leveraging not only the QR scanning uh, capability of, your, of the writer's phone, but it also sent directly to their servers and cutting down on the time. It will, then the highlight will be have a faster um, connectivity, thanks for lean payment, seamless experience for the customers and at the ultimately will regain trust for the from the riders. Our implementation plan break down into three phases. In the 2021 to 2022, we want you to implement the easy payment. From 2023 to 2024 is when the AI technology comes in. And the last phase 2025 and onward, it's where you will leverage Internet of Things to help improve your in transit network management. In the first phase, there are four things we will want you to implement. First, it's a hardware. There, we want to install QR screen at the 10 screen per station at your four substation. And by the end of 2021, we want to implement 3000 QR screen on your buses. And on the second stage of the first phase, developing the easy payment. This is where our expertise comes in to help you. We will bring in two software engineers to help you develop this new feature method, uh, this new payment method. And because we believe that your focus should be on improving the public transit experience for the Quebec riders and lay the back end things for us. The highlight of this stage will be to help compatible our operating, operating system. It will create the app that is user friendly and it should also have the feature that will help with accessibility. Once we have installed the hardware in the station and on the buses, and we have developed the software, the easy payment feature, then we would want to, in the first phase, to, ex to market it to the riders. The key message we want your organization to tell them is to prov it provide a seamless rider experience. And the way we will incentivize that is to provide the riders with discount rate so that they will adopt and have the incentive to provide, to take on. And we'll do that through social media uh, and app advertising. And of course, for the second stage of our plan, which is in the long term, we plan to leverage AI to improve other technology. And so what do we plan to do? We plan to list data servers to, comp to store data, which we're going to be compiling from the, tra from the transit system, and also transfer all the data which we already have into the new server. And now the question is, what's the purpose of this data? And so by doing this, we have a data analytics software that helps you to interpret this data and make better decisions in real time. And so we're going to train MTC operation managers to, to make better decisions and are equipped to manage the transit network better. And on the last day, it where we bring the Internet of Things. Since from step two, we already have all the data we need. We have the AI to help us make better decision. Then how all that decision gonna be delivered to each infrastructure or to each vehicle that on your network system, so that the IoT will have you link everything together. And therefore, from the MTC side, it's gonna gonna improve your transit network management. And on the customer side, it's gonna help you get the real-time data notification on the journey of each vehicle you want. So this plan, we not break it into smaller component because we believe this is gonna be the future. And then here is just a snapshot of that future we want to bring out to MTC today. And ethics and sustainability are the main factors whenever we develop an implementation plan. 
we want to highlight that our plan is economically, pro it's a profitable model and socially responsible. It provides inclusive rider experience. And on the environment side, we will also help recycle the old other cars that people are not using. The one feature I want to bring it to your attention is the inclusivity of experience. The Be My Eye feature is will help people with visually, it's visually impaired to have a voice support assistant. Then whenever you, they know that how, when, how high they scan the, the phone to scan the car. And now let's look at the cost structures. Over the span of the five years until 2025, the biggest cost we'll see is in the hardware installation. However, we have been able to spread this hardware cost among the five years because we pay the structure that we, we're gonna um, have on the contract with the, the providers. And the next thing is software training and marketing costs also come into play. MTC is an org, it's an or government agency. Hence, we want that the revenue that you're saving by implement our plan, it should be 176 million in total revenue saving over until 2025. And it will average yearly saving of 35.2 million. Under the risk analysis, we were able to identify two big risks. First of all, is a cyber threat on customer data storage. And the second one is a vehicle operator's slow adaptation. So to deal with the first risk, we want to use a Canada-based server so that we have the quality certification. We have all the proof on the quality we want. And also the AI that we bring in in the second stage, it can help us to detect all the cyber threat in advance. And to deal with the second risk, that's why we're gonna implement the chain champion campaign. Now, let, take, let me summarize our whole proposal. There are many challenges that MTC is facing right now. However, lay under is it enormous opportunity come from both your internal strength and the support from the external factor. So by implementing QR code payment and leverage IoT and AI technology, it will help to turn all the opportunity into action. And after three stages that we already proposed, it will have you regain rider trust, support the over operator adaptation process. And then by the end of the day, you can left all the problem behind. You can sustainable revenue growth of your company. And most important, you can show that you care about your people, you care about the community and MTC will better serve the community. Thank you for your listening. Now we open the floor for question. Thank you very much, guys. Um, will I start or would you like to go, Emma? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll push. Well done. Really, really impressive, guys. Um, really good analysis. Thank you. And um, now a few, a few hard questions for you. Um, at the moment, um, how, what percentage of the transit people, uh, transit customers use the Ali system? And so right now, about 10% of them use the transit system. So how does your solution address the 90%? And so, okay, so um, so in the case, I'm just going to let James take this one, sorry. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Bonus <laughs> for James. Uh, that's right. Um, so in our implementation plan, the one of the factor in the very first stage is that um, we will have a marketing campaign toward the 90% uh, percent that are non allers users. So that will bring their awareness and regain their trust. And I'm just going to quickly bring that back here for you. Um, yes. So that will be the, the second, it will be the almost its final stage in our, in the, in the first phase after we have the hardware installed and then the software installed. Mm -hmm. and the way we what's, the that, what's the incentive? Right. Why, yeah. why would they bother? What's the, what's in it for them? The incentives, it really comes back to the, like uh, Emma has mentioned about Anna's experience. It's seamless and it's easier to do. The reason why this plan will work is that it shifts the technology burden from your organization down to, to the, the, the user's smartphone. So right now, each user, each, its riders have a smartphone that have the computer capacity of, um, 
a big mm -hmm. better than it. So when it you leverage that QR scanner, it will be uh, like more direct, and the phone will connect directly to your server instead of have to go through the mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the well, but, part but scanner. I'm still, yeah, but yeah, okay. So 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 basically, what you're saying to me, just to be clear, that the technology is so excuse use the word sexy and interesting that I, I'll be attracted to use it is what you're saying to me is it that's uh, ideally yes um but in reality we right. do know that that's fine uh, that's fine I can see where you're coming from um just explain to me exactly how the QR code would work so I, I get on I get on the transport system I get my I scan it so what what does it do I understand what the QR code is, by the way, but what, how does it work? How does it know where I am? How does it deduct the money? How does all that work? Uh, thank you for your question. I can take this one. So right now, because of the COVID-19, many places, instead of using like paper, they turning it into QR so that, and then many and many banks right now, they also implement already have a QR implement into their phone into the banking app on the phone of the user so that the user they can scan at their supermarket or they can scan at the restaurant okay. and then that will link directly to the bank and that's how it will deduct the so account balance. So how does balance. it know how much to, to deduct from my account? Uh, sorry, uh, am I understanding this correct? You asking like how the user will know that how much it deduct no. from your account, right? So well, how how, the, how does the bus, how when I scan it with my QR code, how does the how does the system on the bus know how much to deduct from my bank account? Oh, Is I it get a, it. So like on the bus or on the train, they will be afraid, and they will be let's say in some city, it can be five dollar per one time you traveling, hmm. or it can be ten dollar per one time traveling. So by that way, we implement into the system of the QR. And then it will know how much to deduct it in your account balance so, that on the MTC size. But there's variable costs, isn't there? Depending whether I'm going into zone one, two, or three, or four, or depending on what zone I am. It, uh, it yes. So normally we will implement this QR on each individual bus, and most of the bus they only go from they go, they all have their routine plan ahead that today they're okay. gonna go from point A to point B. So the customer that's, that's going okay. on that route, yeah, on that plane, okay, they will have okay. the range. Okay, one final question and then, then I'll hand over. Explain to me how the IoT piece works. What, what specifically did you mean by that? But you showed lots of flashing things, but it, I, I don't understand what, what, like IoT is basically embedded technology in something, but IoT can be anything. It's like calling it say, ice cream, depends what ice cream you have. So explain to me how you see IoT working in this scenario, please. Uh, yes. So, as we already Give know, Give me some specific IoT, examples, please. Yes. So, Thank you. let's, uh, for example, we have IoT embedded in our buses or in our transits. And then by having the link together, the office will know exactly that which bird it at which road at that which time. And then if there's okay. a delay or detour, they will know right away and they can send it to the customer. Oh, okay. And so they also know that in advance. Oh, that's fine. Almost. Thank you very much. That's okay. Thank that's you. okay. I'm going to hand over. Thank you for no. You answered my question very nicely. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank Sorry, you. guys. I'll hand over. Just watching the time. Great. I can. I can go. Um, I, I don't have a, a lot of questions. I have a, a, a. You. You know. You. You asked my question, Dennis, about IoT. I was unclear. What was the application of the technology here? Uh, you know. I, I saw leverage IoT. Um, as a solution, but I wasn't. I was unclear. But now it's, uh, I have. I have the answers on that. Um, for me, if we go back to the QR code, so currently, uh, if let's say I'm putting myself in the shoes of a of a consumer, of a, I, I use the, the metro every day. I have my LA card, and I simply have to tap my LA card right now and go through the metro. And the issues were, you know, you've identified, uh, like like Dennis said, I, I agree that you've identified the issues very well. And now you are giving me the solution where I have, I no longer have to take it, if, and I'm confirming with you guys, I no longer have to take out my LA card, but I have to take out my phone and then go through on, I know that um, a lot of the phones now they have, you know, this QR, implemented QR code scanner in, within the camera. So I'm assuming that I have to go to my camera application and use that or in, or in, a, in a different QR code. 
can you sell to me what's my interest as a consumer right now? I had one friction. I had one step. I had a, to just tap my card and now I have to do all these new steps to enter the Metro. So what's the benefit to me in terms of convenience and, and, and customer experience? Absolutely. Um, and that's a very fair question from the consumer side. And I, I wanted to, that even though we don't show it on our implementation plan, but in order to reduce your, the friction of your the adaptation for this QR code, then um, there, there's a tactic that we, feature that we can update on the software. For instance, on the iOS, so it's have this widget that only one tap, you open up, you open up that, that uh, QR code scanner on the app and it already automatically will scan it for you. So it's equal to when you just tap your card. And on, that is why like, in our implementation plan, we want to embed in your organization two software engineers so that we have to make sure that all, plat all platform uh, operating system will work seamlessly for this users. And it's not gonna be like, discriminate for iOS or uh, for Android. Sounds good. And my other question was uh, at the beginning of your presentation, you've identified that the majority of the problems come within the network. Um, with this new QR solution, I'm wondering, does this tackle specifically the issue that we were having? Is, is, is the new QR, do we not require a network anymore? Um, are we solving this issue or is it just, um, I, I'm not clear on, on what we're, we're solving for here. Of course, I can take this one. And so the old um, technology uses a radio frequency system, uh, which is a much slower form of networking. And so radio frequency takes uh, more time to send data over um, the distance, right? But QRS kind of uses a more advanced form of technology, usually fiber optics um, technology to implement this. So it's a much shorter means of transmission. Perfect, thank you. And then my last question is, uh, at the beginning of your presentation as well, you've identified that the biggest costs were, if I go back to that pie, let me just bring that up. Um, yes, exactly this one, that most of your, oh yeah, the, the network, um, sorry, a lot of it was due to network and software. And then you said that your biggest cost right now was gonna be in the hardware. And I was curious about that because considering how you have kind of a, a solution that's quite simple in terms of just having to stick on QR codes in terms of hardware, where was the other hardware costs coming from? Absolutely, uh, I was gonna pull out the, uh, the, the comprehensive cost structure that we have prepared. Uh, sorry. Um, it's gonna be... So it's uh, here. Yes. The, 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 the cost, the comprehensive cost structure, the hardware is the first, it's the least data servers. And the, it's uh, the second cost in hardware is the maintenance that uh, those QRs uh, displayed on the buses and on in the, the substation, uh, the subway station. And the last one is the biggest cost, which is the QR scanner screen that we can install in these, the stations and on the buses. And even though we have an ambitious plan of implementing on all of this, the um, there's the screens on all of your, your um, vehicles and at the station. However, we, 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 can, we can achieve that by allocate the cost evenly um, throughout the years. First one, we're gonna do 3 million investment in, in 2021 and then down the line is like this. <coughs> Thank you. I only have one minute, so I have one question. Uh, so your QR code is on the phone or is it a sticker that's going to be applied at the terminals and then you tap your phone to that scanner or is the, or is the on the bus and on at the subway stations, is that where the scanner is and your phone will generate a QR code? So which one is it? It's the oh. first one, Joe. Um, so okay. um, that's the reason why we want this, a screen scanner here, but it's because it's connect, all these screens are connected to the centralized servers and it's a live update. If you need to change the QR code on each bus or each station, then you can do it on your end, like on MTC end. And then it's on the screen, it's not on the phone. Okay, perfect. Okay. So just, so, just to this, James, sorry. Hi, Joe. Sorry. No, uh, how would you propose doing the transition with the people who have the card to the new system? And 
for people, there is a small percentage of people that don't have mobile phones and uh, like uh, uh, high school, I know high school students have cell phones, but let's say uh, first, second year high school students who take public transit may not have a cell phone. How would you account for them to be able to apply and use this uh, process? I can take this question. Um, so we have this discussion during our preparation and we that is the reason why we don't want to eliminate entirely the, the Alice card because we believe there's a proportion, the portion of the riders still using the card. The purpose, the reason why we want to bring in this new payment feature is that we want to bring in the excitement and the, the adaptation, bring up the adaptation rate for you so that by the end of 2025, your um, projected uh, adaptation rate should, should, uh, the, should be like 80% like you have. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Dennis, you had one more? Um, I'm running out of time. I just, um, just in the QR code, if it's static, then it's per bus. But it surely is going to be dynamic because it'll depend where the bus is and or whatever whatever you're getting on if you're interchanging, isn't it? Explain a bit more how the QR code works. I presume it's generated on a screen and you scan it with your phone. So how does it change or what what how would that work, do you think? Uh, there's so first when we when we discuss about the QR code, we wanted to do the easy way, which is only have the photocopy of the QR code like you see on in restaurant that stand on each each uh, bus. However, when you think about the long term, we would want to have a display there because those displays linked back to the centralized servers that MTC mm -hmm. is organizing, All right. and then they can live update the QR code based on the need. Okay, final quick question: What infrastructure is going to be behind the app? You have your app on the phone, you have your QR code, and you have your servers in the distance. What's in the middle? How does the stuff, how does your, from my phone to by the time it hits the bank or the servers, how does, it, how does that work, do you think? I can take this one. Sorry, could you clarify okay, your yeah. question? Could you just okay. clarify your question? I'm just wondering, from my phone you know, on the bus to the point where the data ends up in the server, what's in the middle? What, 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 what infrastructure is in the middle? And so just to just um, so the QR code is going to be on the app. And so there are already existing infrastructure infrastructures that support the app. That's the other app. And so we're not planning to take out any pre-existing or middleman infra infrastructure. We just plan to make use of this and then update it to suit our needs. And so there are already structures in place supporting the app right now. Mm. Well, yeah, at the moment, the app doesn't work very well. So are you saying you'll use if your app with the QR code is the same infrastructure as the LA system? So that's why we have a, a software engineer's um, cost here. So we plan to update this app and periodically update it over the next five years. So we have 50,000, 50,000 costing. We understand there are going to be bugs and there are going to be needs to update the system. And that's why we have included it in our cost. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, great presentation, guys, and thank you, judges, for um, all of the amazing questions. Um, now we're going to enter deliberation. Um, as usual, everybody is going to be assigned to a breakout room. Please um, accept the invitation when you get that. Thank you, thank you. Francis. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.
Okay, just give it a second. So everybody's back. And everybody is back. Um, judges, the floor is yours for feedback. Perfect, I can kick us off. Great, um, so good job team. A, a very great, great presentation. We all agreed that the flow of the presentation, it was well delivered. Um, and we know how nerve wracking case comps can be and how they, you know, you've probably been working all day and, and in the past few months working very hard to, par to practice for this. So really great job. Um, I think overall on my end, my comments, um, and I told this to my colleague, I was, I was general comment that I'll make also for you guys to take away. And, and Joe says it always like take this feedback as it says it really good always, but take this feedback and put it in your toolkit and use it to, to move forward and not, this is completely, um, you know, constructive criticism. When we talk about um, technology, for me, every time you have a technology case, case competition or you're, you're presenting a technological solution, technology are tools, they're enablers, they're not a solution. So when you were talking about in your in that second phase and, and it was titled leveraging AI, uh, IoT and AI, you were really you were missing the solution. You were missing the the piece that the client would really want to know is leveraging AI and IoT to do what? Like what is this going to do for me? Um, you know, if if generally if you're doing a consulting mandate and you're talking to clients and you and you give them these technical terms, they're gonna sh they're gonna shut off. They're gonna say, "Oh, I don't understand what IoT or AI is, and I don't understand what it does for my bottom line and for my customers." So really, make sure that when you are giving uh, technological solutions, you're delivering what the value of that technology will bring to your solution and and what it does to the customer and for the company. Um, so generally, I would say that, that that's my my first comment overall for for the presentation. And then the second one is around QR codes. Um, I think I was maybe it, the, it's the way it was said or the messaging. I was lacking the what the, what is the real value? Why did you guys choose QR codes amongst all the different options that you could have chosen? All the different technology. What's the real benefit of QR codes? And uh, if there is, and why did you guys go with that? Because that's a bold move to go to with uh, you know a technology that right now is starting to kind of become obsolete. The, the QR codes, but uh, you, if you sell it well and you explain to us why did you go with QR codes, um, I think I, it would have been a, a good hook. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then, okay, judges, well, uh, do you have anything else? Yeah, I'll pitch in. So, um, well done, guys. Um, I like the presentation a lot. I think you're most certainly for me, the upfront analysis is really good. Um, you really hit the nail, you hit, hit all the bases. Um, your flow was very good, good presentation, um, good quality slides, and the Q&A was handled well. And I think uh, bonus points for James uh, for handling the hard questions. Um, I, as we said, Emma, I think we're, we're kind of fell down a bit for me, and it was only when I'm through your slides later. I think your business analysis was there, but if I didn't look in the slide deck that you sent, which was slide 27, or slide 50 or something way down the slide deck, I wouldn't have seen the work you've put in, which was a bit disappointing. And I think you could have done a bit more. I know you have some nice summary slides there, but in the cost structure, I think it would be useful if you would have included that, uh, maybe one of those slides in the in the main deck, because it's really important that we see the numbers. We didn't see them. And even when I pushed you, it didn't come out. And I'm going to check the deck. Um, the QR code, yeah, I, I think um, for a number of different reasons, it's clumsy to use, it's obsolete technology, um, and you know, getting on a bus, it's swipe and go. There's no kind of hanging around. If you lots of people coming on, on and off, and, and I, I don't see QR code as the answer, so I, I would have thought a, re a rethink around that one would be useful. And the other piece that's missing for me is all the bits in the middle. I see the app, I see the back end servers, what's in the middle. I, I, you need to explain that more. And the other issue is 90% of people don't use online payments, they don't use any SNADs. And the simplest way to solve that problem would be give them a either make it more expensive to do it that way because it costs, if you have to handle cash, there's huge overheads handling cash, counting it, bagging it, getting it to the bank, cash in transit, all that, there's huge amounts of issues around cash. And there's also security risks. And um, if you're doing tokens or anything to merchants, there's, there's an overhead on that. So there's lots and lots of saving which could have been brought about if, you, if we gave, say, a heavy discount to people to come on board. So they, I think you missed an opportunity there in marketing. 
but overall, I think it look you're good. You're a strong team, and I think you work really well together. And overall, I would think you did a very good job. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I took. I appreciated the way you kicked off your meeting. You introduced yourself. So you presented yourself, and then you excused your colleague who wasn't there. So. I don't know if he helped you design and work on the slides today and then had to excuse himself for this evening or if you the three of you took took on the challenge by the, as a team well hats off to you you did a very good job as a team of three and supporting your colleague uh so very good for that uh like the dennis and emma said you know good presentation we love the flow you guys handed it off smoothly between yourselves amongst yourselves was really well done. The only thing I got a bit hooked up on is the QR codes. How does the how does the bus driver know you've actually paid? You know, you can scan a QR code. What does he get a signal that you've that the payment has been made? Whereas with the LA card, he swipes, he he gets a green signal or something. When you just stack static and you're using your own phone to communicate back to the system. So I don't know if there was a Somewhere in the back end of your file, you thought of that, but it's something that would have to be thought of. But other than that, you attacked a couple of issues that were hidden gems in the uh, in the case study. The first one was the how the operators are not comfortable with the LA technology because it keeps failing, and how do they fix it? As a bus driver, this machine keeps breaking in front of me, and I don't know what to do with it, etc. And Emma, you introduced we understand there's an operator issue and the, the operators aren't happy with it. So we're trying to find a better solution for them. So you guys caught that little nugget and you, 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 you attempted to address it. And then it's sort of petered out in the presentation. I went through the rest of your deck. You had a lot of information in the back end, which I would have loved to have seen in the front end and some of the stuff in the front end, which could have gone to the back end, you know, Biggest thing for me in my in the company I work for is cybersecurity. You hardly talked about the cybersecurity issues with regards to uh, cell phone and payments using phones, et cetera. How do you protect somebody's information and banking information? Because we know there are people out there that use that will walk around and try to scan your, your phone for information or other things. So thank you very much. You guys did a very good job. And uh, to, like, my colleague Emma said earlier, put this in your tool belt. You got a big case coming up tomorrow. So rest up and get ready because we're here. You know, these are all comments to help you guys as you move along. Thank you very much. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, team. Great presentation, as always. Yeah. And thank you, judges, for um, all the feedback, um, team. Good luck for tomorrow and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well Thank you. done. Bye bye. Get a good night's sleep. So, Francis, we send you the the private message with our thought, with our. Uh... Um. Actually, can uh, all the judges just uh, come to the breakout room for a second? Yep. How do Thank you, guys. Leave it there. Mm -hmm. Um. You're sending us an invite, Francis. Uh, it's uh, at the bottom of the page. If you can press on the breakout room button. Don't know if it works for me. Hold on, man. Oh, sorry. Hold on, yeah. It's a different part of the page.
Welcome back, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Can someone's name is N1021? Okay. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's the okay. And it keeps, keeps going back to that. I'll fix that now. Thank you.
Hi guys, we're here. Welcome All right, everyone. You guys can uh, start uh, sharing your screen. All right, we Sorry, I'm just trying to get it already. to Sorry. share the right. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it to share the right screen. Um, sorry, it won't be a second. Sorry, not having much luck. Let's try this. Take your time. Yeah, we can see it okay now. Whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Edwards, and today I'm joined by my colleagues, Tom, Nathaniel, and Rani, and we are Real Consulting. We have developed a proposal for Montreal Transports Commission on how they can effectively utilize their Allo device technology moving forwards into the future. Thanks, Rani. Looking across the key question, how they can mitigate all of the issues that they have currently been experiencing with their devices, um, it's important to ensure that they're not losing any riders or provincial funding through this. Our analysis revealed that they really need to address their um, current device issues, as otherwise it will result in substantial financial as well as social costs. We developed a four prong recommendation in which this would be able to be rolled out over five year timeline. It would involve upgrading all of the other device features and gradually replacing the devices with newer models. It also involves a pricing strategy which will help encourage the user transition into the Allo technology, as well as data anal analytics through monitoring tap on, tap off, which will provide some additional resources that MTC will be able to use in the future. As a result of implementing these, you'll, um, MTC will gain reliable system for public transport and improve their user experience. They'll also have an increased uptake and use of their technology as these features become more and more prevalent. It will also result in a positive MPV um, with a $5 million increase in MPV over the life of this implementation. Thanks, Rani. Currently, MTC has identified that they are, are facing significant issues due to their devices, which does have a lot of repercussions. As the system is still new, only introduced about a year ago, it does only have 10% public update, uptake to date. However, um, the system has been unreliable with 10% of the devices malfunctioning at any given time and people being forced to use other devices or even alternate payment methods in order to use the, in order to use the public transportation. The process was designed in order to streamline the processes and to provide that benefit to users. However, this failing system is making it difficult to do so. And as the users aren't um, uptaking on it quickly as well, there's inconsistency in the information that they're receiving from the operators who are also struggling as a result of all of these difficulties. Thanks, Rani. Looking at this, <clears throat> we can see that there's a negative public per perception that has come out as a result of this, which has also resulted in a slower uptake of ALA, um, which um, due to the difficulties that they're facing, provides us an opportunity to move forwards. Next slide. Excellent. So as Lauren mentioned, there's a number of uh, financial repercussions to not fix any of the system. And this would not only uh, have financial impacts, but damage the reputation of the uh, business. Uh, additionally, with COVID-19, we would expect a slight decrease in the uh, usage of public transport and so uh, decrease in uh, the revenue across last year. However, when we analyse the net present value through a free cash flow methodology, what we see is that there's, by not doing anything, there's $5 million of lost value. And contrastingly, when the business just upgrades the system, uh, the a 10% of the broken 
uh, a la devices, there's $6 million of lost value by not uh, undertaking our proposal. Thanks. When developing our proposal going forwards, we did consider many different options for it. Um, as Tom just mentioned, there were financial reasons as to why it wouldn't make sense in order to maintain the existing processes. Um, however, it is also was important to consider re um, reverting to the previous system, um, looking at actually taking away the Allo technology and going back to the um, way things used to be. However, it was decided that that would not be an effective solution moving forwards as it would have already resulted in high costs um, and it would also be a step backwards in terms of technology um, where they've finally been able to move forwards in this sphere. We did also consider altering the existing system that was present, looking at how we could use the infrastructure and be able to um, adapt that, potentially looking at fixing maintenance costs and streamlining processes over the time, as well as investigating a new system altogether. There were multiple different solutions towards this that we will consider in a couple of slides as well. Um, and looking at these, they often did come with the high investment costs, and there's always that risk of having a low consumer uptake. However, it was determined that the um, altering the existing system or developing a new system altogether would be the most efficient way in order to approach the future. Thanks, Rani. As a result, these are the two solutions that we determined to focus on moving forwards. Thanks, Lauren. <clears throat> so there are many digital trends for MTC to consider. Um, when considering the future of the systems. So mobility, where mobile phone application, Apple Google Pay, it would be great to pay, to be able to tap on with your phone. Um, Internet of Things, so auto check-in features, um, and tapless RFID tags. Data analytics, tap on, tap off system and ping data collecting. So the tapping on, tapping off um, gives MTC crucial data on how to make decisions on development. And artificial intelligence, so automating systems like ticket proof operators. And thanks, thanks, Rani. Thanks, Rani. And so these these are examples um, that aren't new. So heaps of countries have been using these as their standards. Thanks. So MTC has also needs to consider the needs of all demographics that uses its services. So young people under the age of 17 may require guardians if under the age of 12. Um, young adults, 18 to 27, they're who are quicker to adopt new technology technologies and are more likely to use LA. Um, adults, 28 to 59, um, moderate adoption of new technology. However, they may be a bit skeptical because of the reputation from LA. And mature adults where require high accessibility needs um, and they're later in adopting new technology. However, that's because they're familiar with um, the traditional methods. Thank you. Marnie. Thank you. So I'll just go through the implementation timeline now. There was a few steps that we have recommended for MTC to undertake. So we're beginning with in 2020, it was just quality control, checking what's working, what's not. Next, in 2021, MTC should work alongside ALA to improve and increase the quality of machines, making sure any of these faults that they're facing are being improved. And this is also um, making sure we're re replacing about 15% of the components. So you can see here some of our technological issues between software, hardware, and network. And then we're going to replace about 15% of the machinery once we have improved technology. We'll go through these issues in more depth later. The next step is in 2022. This is where MTC should replace 85% of the machines and begin an app development. So this app development will be done with a team of software engineers and it's working on creating an Apple and Google Pay system so they can tap on using their phones. It needs to be compatible for Android and iPhone. And additionally, they need to make an app which can show um, trends, times, for the schedules, as well as what station, et cetera. So all of this is vital information at the tip of everyone's hand. So in 2023, this is where MTC should increase a gradual um, a ticket price increase for um, the traditional tickets and a gradual app rollout. So as you can see, the average cost per rider for a cardholder in the previous years was $3.50. 
However, it is recommended that they should increase that for a non-card holder to 375 and remain that a card holder should have the same 350. This is to incentivize people to actually switch to Ella and it's reducing the amount of contact, especially with COVID, all of that hygiene safety is really important to make sure we're reducing the amount of contact between people and it should also spike the increase in Ella technology. 2024, this is where monitoring and quality control comes into play with the app, making sure it's working well, making sure the features in the replacement of the machines are still um, vital. And this is also where MTC should implement a tap on tap off feature development section. So using that agile development method, this is goes through the steps of requirements, design, development, testing, and deploy. We wanna do this quickly, making sure we're developing it, but testing it along the way. And the tap on tap off feature is going to allow MTC to collect crucial data so they can improve efficiencies, increase times during peak periods and seeing what are the popular stations and when are the popular times. Lastly, in 2025, the tap off feature should be implemented throughout, making sure that the public is aware of the steps that are required to tap on tap off, making sure people don't forget. So I'll pass over to now. Right. Thanks. So yeah, as Rani mentioned, and we've mentioned before, there are several technological issues um, that riddled around 10% of the ALA system devices. And so this came from software, hardware and network issues. Uh, evidently, these require some engineering solutions. Um, as you can see, there's different costs, particularly for the hardware and network of just replacing the device. And we did the throughout our analysis, determined that these were the best way moving forward. Uh, and we'll go to the next one. Great, so some of these solutions uh, for the software, we saw that uh, onboarding a team of five software engineers would be the most effective way to deal with uh, the development of the app, as well as those 10% uh, of issues that occurred on the Allard devices, including bug fixes. And so this would require them to develop a ticketing system where when they notice that uh, bugs come through or uh, that the system isn't coding correctly to a correct price, then they can uh, develop that through. They will also can uh, control the app development and the uh, some of the data analytics that occurs later down the line. Uh, so some of the hardware, so as mentioned 2020 is quality control of the manufacturing process 2021 will begin a rollout of those upgraded components that 15 percent and the remainder in this 2022 and we're just going to ensure that those quoted prices we've been given uh, to fix these solutions will ensure the newest technology available with the nfc chips or whatnot for card readers and finally the network we can see that they will need a gradual implementation of higher quality telecommunications components uh, whether these are connections um, or antenna and the continual investment in the increased connection speed, uh, which occurs on a monthly basis. basis. Thanks. So through the financial analysis, we saw that there was a positive MPV uh, behind or value to undertake this project that was greater than what they would experience through not undertaking anything at all. Um, you can see that the net cash flow is affected in the first few years through the uh, rollout of the upgraded uh, systems. Uh, and particularly, we can see there's a difference just in 2022. However, in 2023 uh, and going onwards, the increase in ticket prices to non-card holders is able to recuperate those costs loss in those first couple of years. Um, and this will, and that increase in that legacy system price uh, leads to a greater uptake of the, the new devices. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. So there is a strong economic justification of, of increasing the price, prices of tickets and tokens. Um, the model on your left shows you the ticket tickets and tokens demand and supply of 2023. So when we increase the price from $3.50 to $3.75, you will see that almost 50,000 users will, will leave the market. 
for tickets and tokens. Um, and as a result, the supply will then shift inwards, which means that um, ticket booths are then going to be obsolete, eventually. Um, and then the model on your right shows what happens to LA as, as the prices of tickets rise. So people will then transition to the LA devices, um, which will shift the demand out as more people enter the LA market. And then, and we can see that if we want to adjust for market pricing, we can bump the price up to $3.60 from $3.50. Now, it's a clear incentive, financial incentive for people to move from a ticket system to a the tap on tap off system with LA. Thanks, Tom. Uh, thanks, Rani. So mitigating risk is a key is key in any project to ensure success. So we've experienced pushbacks from public because of our poor reputation in the device in the devices. Um, and the solution to that is market the benefits of the new technology and encourage this transition. Um, the second risk is continued M MTC reputational damage. So ensure devices are high functioning before rollout through testing. So and issues issues with LA technologies um, reoccurring. So we don't want any more problems reoccurring with our new technology. So using the agile me model, we can- All right, um, really sorry update. to interject guys, but the time is up. Thank you for listening. Thank you team for the presentation. Um, now we're entering the Q and A session. Judges, if you have any questions, please do fire away. I'll pitch in if everybody's being shy. Um, thank you very much, guys. Very good presentation. Um, and um, yeah, it's you've, you've hit a lot of the bases for us, so I'm, I'm going to get stuck into questions. Um, just go, just jump into your supply demand forecast there. You talk about slide number. I think it's slide number 23, where you look at the, the move from tickets and tokens to alley demand and supply. And just talk to me where, where, where the assumptions came from there. Yep. So um, in 2023, there's a 50%, um, there's a 50% estimation of people um, going, who are going to adopt the LA. So that's where we came up with the 50,000 um, people. And where did you get the number from? Is it an um, in, estimate or is it? Uh, say again. In in the briefing that we were given, there. Were... Okay, I must have spotted that. Okay, apologies. Yeah. Okay, and um, and how, why did you set the the discount for movement at twenty five cents, which is a seven percent discount on the price? Why why did you set it at three? And then when you when you, I think later on, then you reduce it down to. 10 cents is it yep so why we increased wow. um, the prices for tickets up by 25 cents there, there are a number of reasons for that yeah. so what, 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 yeah why 25 cents is seven percent it's kind of small, modest isn't it uh yeah um so we were just looking to incentivize people to Get onto the LA. Okay. So, so what savings do you think will accrue oh. to the business by moving? Yeah. What costs will be avoided by the business yeah. by moving more towards electronic? Do you think? Yeah, I might take what? that. Um, so, just to answer the twenty-five cents increase, uh, we found that so to replace the eight thousand uh, devices, there was about mm -hmm. a thirty million dollar cost towards that. And so the 25 cent increase over the period of uh, 2023 to 2025 would raise 79, uh, yeah, around $79 million in revenue. Um, and that comes in about a $28 million increase in the 2023. So almost fully covering that cost. Um, and to answer the second point around um, what other savings, we believe that uh, obviously reducing ticket sales decreases the um, that footprint of continually printing out that uh, paper because 90% of consumers currently require paper tickets or tokens, um, whether that's a monthly, yeah, or cash. And so we, what we saw through the, through our analysis is that by going to a f almost fully electronic 
system is that you don't have to have those ticket boosts there. And so that will be okay. an additional savings where you can okay. Okay. Um, okay. I have one final question, then I hand over. I, I I've left some questions unanswered that I was going to ask, but I'm sure Emma will pick them up. Um, it's just on the use of AI and data analytics. How how are you proposing to use those? Yeah, I could do that. Start that if you'd like. Um, thing. So the AI probably is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll start with data analytics. So what we see when we introduce a tap on and tap off system, which we believe, uh, which we saw isn't currently in place, it's just a tap on system, we'll be able to track where people's journeys are taking them. So are they just going one stop? Are they going multiple stops? Okay. And we'll be able to potentially do further pricing strategy after 2025 to uh, for longer journeys that might be more expensive than the shorter journeys. And so hopefully okay. a shorter journey being cheaper, really get that metropolitan area using the service. Okay. Uh, and and the artificial intelligence, uh, it's probably one that, yeah, hasn't been looked into as deeply, but uh, yeah, there are a couple points okay. there. Okay. I'll hand over to everybody. Uh, sorry for cutting it short. Just want to make sure everybody has a chance to ask a question. Thank you very much, Tom. I just got a couple with your tap on tap off. Uh, do you see that impacting people trying to get off a bus and or jumping out of a not jumping out, but just trying to get off a train platform or whatever. Now they got to take out their card again and tap out where right now you basically just walk off a bus and you're not doing any of that. Do you see that that's going to take some education? in order to uh, get people accustomed to this new technology that you're introducing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, require a couple additional, um, uh, just a little bit of extra education in there to make sure people are aware um, of the requirement to tap off as well as tapping on. However, you often find that people do have their cards easily accessible anyway. Um, and it's particularly when we are rolling out, having that through the application. So where you can even have your card on your phone, um, you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people on public transport who don't even have their phone in their hand, um, let alone their pockets anyway. So by having that easily accessible, it wouldn't be something that would be um, creating much of a stop or blockage on the way in or out of public transport as well. Um, and as well with trains, I believe to the best of my understanding, the um, current devices are kept on platforms. I could be mistaken in that aspect, um, but even so that does allow for the smooth transitioning of people um, just moving through the different spaces. Um, and so although they would have to have that little bit of extra knowledge that they might not currently be prepared for, um, it is quite feasible looking at um, going forwards with that. Okay. And how would your system current uh, take into consideration people who have to, because uh, currently, and it, uh, who have to take more than one bus. So they have to, they're going from point A to point B, but they have to change at, a, at B minus 10, they have to change buses or change trains, et cetera. Do you see them having to do a second payment for that? For that, Or is there like a fee for a day charge or within yeah. a couple of hours or whatever? No, that's a, yeah, that's a great point to raise. Um, what we saw in... Uh, through the analysis of what some other countries have done, we can just implement a ticket continuation. So they scan on the first bus, uh, scan off and scan on, when they scan on that second bus within a small period, a uh, small time frame. sorry, it will wreck, the system will just ping it and go, yep, that's a continuation of their uh, transport from work or wherever they're traveling to and from. And they'll be charged for the, uh, yeah, just from rather than from A to B and then a second from B to C, just A to C one cost. Perfect. Mm. That's it for me, Emma. Sure, I can jump in here. Um, I have two main questions and then I'll, I'll think about it if we have a, a more time. But my, my first question is I loved your slide. I think, uh, you know, there's no slide numbers here, but I, I think it was slide number nine. Um, where you address, you know, you need to consider the needs for all demographic. And I was wondering, how did you use this as input? Did, did you use this as input to identify the situation, uh, you know, the solution that you've, the recommendations that you've decided to go with? Um, and, and if so, how? 
Yeah, so when considering each sort of demographic and especially age demographics, so we've got the sort of mature adults where they have some accessibility issues and standing at the ticket booth and trying to navigate or, or buy a ticket may be difficult for them. It will be a lot easier with a sort of tap on, a tap off method for them. Um, and young adults as well as, well as adults, um, or everyone really appreciates sort of an efficient system where we avoid having to go to a ticket booth and then transitioning from that to the bus or the train. I'll just add to that as well. Um, for the older adults who may um, struggle kind of understanding the system or what stop to hop on and hop off, there still will be ticket booths available for them to get that in-person assistance as required, making sure they are supported and able to get where they need to go. That's great, thank you. Um, my next question is about leveraging uh, currently what we have. Right now, I see that you are in your solution, you're building a new app from scratch, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, if I look at my, my Alley uh, here in, in the case, it said that you, you already, people already have a My Alley account. So I'm assuming there might already be an app. There's already, a, you know, logins uh, for people. So are we leveraging any of that or are we, sunking that cost and um, starting over from scratch? Uh, to our understanding of the brief, there was no app. However, there was, you do make an account and I, um, it was assumed that it was on a website. So that website will still be using with your Ali account, your, um, your card, you'll have your, your number on there and that will you be your unique I account identify her sorry um so that will be linked up to your phone app um and the apple wallet type of situation so you you can also download the app and if you don't have the physical card you'll be able to purchase a card on the app and have the physical one sent to you and have the digital one as well so some of that cost has already been bared in the development of the website however it will be updating and streamlining all the processes. That's great, thank you. Um, I wanna go back, I see that I saw that we have a little bit of time remaining. So I wanna go back to that strategic pricing. I'm not sure I understood fully, are, are we saying, um, if you go on, the, on your exec summary, you said that you are using strategic pricing to increase the adoption essentially of, of encourage user transition to the Alley app. Is this because you're reducing so people who are going on the app will have a lower price or I understood that you're, you know, you're uh, bumping up the price to recover the cost of the development? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the price bump is actually um, for tickets. So if you were to go buy a ticket from the booth, oh, it would cost okay. more than it would if you had the card or your app to travel. So people with the app are paying less than people who are buying tickets to the, okay. Makes That's sense. correct. Yeah, and, and probably just to add to, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go I ahead. I was just going to say, just to add to that on the slides where we had that economic analysis where, um, yeah, so the first picture was the current ticket price is $3.50. It would bump up to, uh, by 25 cents to three seventy five, And then the uh, 3.5 to 3.6 graph, if that might be a bit where some confusion was earlier, is that we could, uh, with that increase in demand from the LA servers, is that we could increase the price of uh, using the tap on card feature, but we're deciding to keep it at $3.50 and that is financially viable, we found. That's great. Can I ask a very quick question? Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, how have you dealt with ethics and sustainability? I, I'm just struggling to find it on the slide there. Um, I'll jump in to grab this one. Um, so we did definitely consider um, particularly the different social demographics and um, we did discuss how it would affect, impact each of those. Um, looking mm -hmm. sustainably though as well, um, we, to the best of our understanding, Ticket Bruce does actually have quite a sustainable, uh, not sorry, a non-sustainable impact, um, particularly with the printing of um, multiple um, pieces of paper and the wastage that would often result of that. Um, I know that it's often quite difficult for people to seem to put that in rubbish bins or um, re like recycle them responsibly. Instead, they do often end up left over the um, ground where you're walking. And so it would be um, quite 
an improvement in order to actually have okay. um, cards that they can reuse um, and that they'll be able to get multiple uses out of, um, which will just make that little bit of extra sustainability difference um, with that reusable feature. And even when it goes to the app, when they don't even have to have the cards, um, just being okay. able to use the phones which they already have on them to reduce that footprint. Okay, uh, and one very fine quick one. Um, what infrastructure sits between the, the app and the servers and the bus and the servers? What, what's, what's in the middle? I know Apple Pay is in there. What else is in the middle there somewhere? Between the app and the... Uh, the and the back the end actual... servers where all the data is. Yeah. How, do you, how, how does all that connection work? Do you think? That is a good question. Uh... <laughs> it, it's what they call the honors question. The, the yeah. one one question, the first last honors question. <laughs> We'd, uh, yeah, our background isn't tech, uh, sort of telecommunications specific or uh, software. Uh, we'd have to bring someone on to fully understand that. Um, but worry. ideally, okay. yeah, the, yeah, as soon as our understanding is that, as soon as you'd be able to tap onto that, that'd be, yeah, shot through, uh, yeah, some telecommunications okay. service. Uh I ask a question for Joe. So what's your cybersecurity strategy around this? Yeah, well, I would say one of the uh, software engineers we'd have, um, one of the five, uh, would ideally have, uh, you know, some background in cybersecurity. Um, obviously, with huge emphasis on uh, per like personal uh, security and fraud at the moment um especially with things that have happened recently with facebook uh yeah definitely need to have some pretty good security uh firewalls um yeah that'd be consulted through the uh software engineers we bring on and so i'll just hand over to my colleagues and maybe joe or and um, i might have another question for you um, actually, guys, thank you so much for all the questions. We're actually out of time right now. Um, Real Consulting, good job. And uh, as usual, we're entering deliberation right now. So everybody is going to be assigned to a breakout room. So please join when the system is asking. Thank you very much, guys. Great presentation. Thank you.
Hello. All right, let's just give it a minute so everybody can come back. Let me just check. All right, everybody's back and uh, judges, floor's yours. Okay, we all here, we? We're all here. Super. Do you wanna take it away, Dennis? <laughs> oh, Dennis, and then I'll go. <laughs> We'll leave, we'll leave uh, okay. Emma last. Well, they, 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 they. Okay, we better tell the guys they, they want me to go first because they think my accent is more like your accent and they don't really understand us. So, But um, they do actually. But look guys, really, really good presentation. And I'm, I'm very impressed by what I saw tonight. I think you, your analysis of problem identification was very good for me. The business analysis was good. The engineering was good. And, I, and, and when I pushed, you know, the fact that I pushed you, pushed you for questions, I do that all the time to find out the depth. And, and when you got to a point where you couldn't explain, you were you had the courage to look, I don't know, which is fine. And um, I think the the innovation piece is interesting. I think for me, the fact, I think the comment about that for you here was believable and pragmatic was the way I describe your solution, which for me is very important. And um, the one area I would say you need to just be careful, you need to score on everything. You, you didn't pull together a slide on the ethics and sustainability. You know, it's worth 10%. So make sure you put a slide in for that. And we picked up a few, you get some score for it, but, but I think your presentation was really good. The handovers were good. Um, it just flowed for me and everybody was was able to pitch in and um, uh, add, to, add to it. So from my point of view, uh, great performance. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best in the next round. Well done. Okay. Hi, guys. Nice and relaxed. You're calm. Uh, Whatever comments we give you, take it as a positive criticism. Uh, put it in your toolbox. You have a big case later on today or this evening for you guys, and then uh, presenting Friday and Saturday, or Saturday is uh, the party. So just take whatever comments you get and use it to improve your final presentations. So what I really liked was the flow. You did a very good job with your presentation. Love the demographic slide. You seem to really capture that essence of the different age groups. And I'll be honest, you're the, the only team that seemed to capture that, who put that in, because everybody uses it differently. Like old guys like me, how do I use a phone or et cetera? And then young kids, they just flip it on and off they go. So it's different technology for different ages and you seem to capture it. Uh, you talked about replacing, taking the existing technology and looking for where the flaws were and developing and taking time to understand, fix it, doing an analysis of it, and then developing a, a further solution downstream instead of scrapping the process, starting with something new and implementing. So that was a, a smart and pragmatic approach. Uh, and I really appreciated that one. The only comment I would have, you know, you have your roadmap slide and you had all the different years and you would go back and forth to it. When you, if you were to use that again, when you move from one year to the next and you bring up the roadmap, color the year you're talking about. So you have 2021, 22, 23. So you're going to go to slot 23. So I had to wait till the next year to see where we were to the next slide, see what year you're talking about. So it's a slide that repeats itself, but you can just by color coding it, at least it draws our attention to where you're going. And I made this comment to the Francis from Edgecom. One thing you guys should do is when you come on is just do a mic check. Hey, can everybody hear me? Is at one point Nathaniel's microphone was just cutting in and out. And then all of a sudden he'd move forward and he would be booming through my speaker. So it's little things like that. And just ask, can I do a mic check? And we'll all be patient and let it happen. You know, if you were standing in an auditorium in front of us, we would be hearing you. But uh, so I, you guys knocked it out. Thank you very much. Very good job. Madame Emma. Yes, I will wrap it up. Um, echoing my colleagues here, my fellow judges, definitely very good job. Um, I think this is a, a strong team, strong presentation. Uh, 
in terms of just presentation skills, the slides were nice, it was very clear, crisp, uh, everyone presented really well. I think I really like the analysis. I feel like you understood the problem well and you messaged that well as well. Um, you were probably the only team that brought in clear alternatives. And so I think maybe it's my consulting background here that's talking, but I felt like they were messy and you had exactly, you know, here are your possibilities uh, in, within the reality today. And this is why we're choosing these ones. Maybe the, this is why we're choosing these ones, that statement, that could have been a little, you know, I'm just, we're, we're, we were trying to poke holes when we were in the feedback session, we were trying to poke holes. Okay, how could they be incrementally better? Because it was, it was very strong. But, um, you know, I think, yeah, using, you know, those, you have all the all alternatives. Now, what are my criteria? So that slide about the consumer needs, you could have really used that as strong inputs into this is why, because of these people and because of these specific needs, this is why we used, uh, we implemented this specific solution. So really, you know, you had that first step. It was really good to think about your, your end consumer. Now, how are we going to use these insights? Um, and then, yeah, good visual. Um, Consumer needs, that's my, my big my big insights. Uh, and then, you know, tactically, if I can help you, if you go into the next rounds, I would think around when you're when you're presenting slides, for example, I think it's slide 23, there wasn't, oh, another thing, put, put in, I don't know if this was the last minute, but put in slide numbers. That's really helpful for judges for us when we're taking notes um, and even for clients when you do presentations like this in, in the real world. Um, it's always good to, to, to have those slide numbers. But I think it was slide 23 with the supply and demand charts. Uh, that's, a, you know, that strategy is, is and this is what we're, we were saying in the, in the feedback room, probably the only team that really tackled the issue about how are we transitioning people to this LA? So what's the incentive, you know, and, and really giving them a financial incentive to, to, to switch. But I feel like this slide could be much more powerful if that was the main focus w without, you know, all the graphs and stuff, you know, really just saying the, the business solution essentially and having that analysis and more of a, the technical reason of why you're choosing this in the background more. So maybe that could have been like the appendix slide and then the, the slide could have just been like, we're gonna be increasing, you know, if you choose whatever, you understand the point of what, what I'm trying to say here. But uh, I think that's it on my end. I'm just trying to, you know, give you little pieces, bits and pieces so you can take that away for your next presentation tomorrow. Oh, and I love the executive summary slides. Those, those are really helpful for us and for the you know, presentation overall flow. Do you have any questions for us? Any further feedback or are you happy with the feedback you have? No, very happy, thanks. <laughs> That's really well done. Fant fantastic, really, really well done. Um, and just next at the next stage, do equally as good and, and it, it's there for you go for it thank you very much for your, your um unfortunately in ireland it is now um quarter to one in the morning so um mm. i think i'm gonna have to go uh, say goodbye to my colleagues here um, and thank you very much for your uh for your contribution tonight well done thank you really well done thank you and guys one thing before your next presentation take a minute take a deep breath practice practice as a team your presentation your next one is uh, the the biggest one so Take an opportunity, and it looks like you did practice and you did rehearse it, which is good. And also just relax. We, we've said it to most of the teams, or I've said it to most of the teams. Just relax, and you'll see the, the more relaxed you are, the better it comes out. And it's something you guys will carry with you as you move on in your careers. Okay? Thanks a lot. So, Francis, do you need us some more for anything else? Yes, I'm going to need uh, the judges in the breakout room just uh, for a quick second, please. Yes. And uh, Rio Consulting, great job. Have a wonderful day and good luck for uh, the next case. Thank you very much. Thanks. See you guys. you guys. Take care. Bye. Thank Enjoy. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.